Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. This is Hippie Tesla. Welcome to episode two of Radical Dreamers, Le Trésor Interdit, which actually means in this translation, the forbidden treasure. The original subtitle, Japanese subtitle, was the unstealable jewel. So there we go. We can clear that up. Uh, I like this game. I didn't know what to think yesterday when I was starting it. I didn't want to start it off stream. Uh, just slight education about the game, which I already knew from the past as a fan of the Chrono series, at least what was released in the West. But <laughs> after yesterday, I honestly, I haven't laughed like that in a stream in a long time, especially like in a single player stream. It's different when we play Outbreak and we josh around, but this was something totally different. So let's get into it. Before we start, hello, Lyubka. Hello, Gammy. Good to see you in the stream, guys. How are you doing over there? Gammy's probably at work, I'm gonna imagine. And Lyubka, Lyubka canceled shopping to watch her brother stream. That's adorable. Here, I'm jumping for you. Yeah, Lyubka's here. Ah, I think I hurt my neck. That's how much how, how much I like you. <laughs> okay. Uh, two hours in only? Yeah, two hours. I like how he just jumps in. Push of a button. Here we are. <laughs> so, what happened since... Uh, what happened yesterday... Not much. We put lipstick on a marble statue. That's the highlight of the stream. Damn, I should really... I should clip that. Seriously. <laughs> I should really clip that putting lipstick on the marble statue. That was <laughs> that was the highlight in my eyes. That and wading through a room full of piranhas. Trying to get to the further door and then dying in the water. <laughs> Changing mind halfway through. <laughs> Those were the two best moments yesterday, in my opinion. That is the spirit, yeah. <laughs> I'm well, and yeah, I'm <laughs> where I always am. I'm pretty sure you're at home at some point. Uh, some sometime during the day, you're also at at home. I was gonna say at work, <laughs> but yeah, home as well. Yeah, I did die. Well, Serge died. Luckily, it wasn't me, but still. So, lesson is: if you ever find yourself in a trap room full of piranhas or piranodons, as they call them. As, and they're slowly eating your legs and stomach as you're trying to wade through water, go to the closest door. Don't go to the furthest door. Don't try to kill them one by one either. That doesn't work. <laughs> so, we made our way back down the dark side passage. Dark side passage leading from the study. Yeah, the study was the last place I was in. Yeah, it's because of the time difference. I, yeah, at this time, sure. Unless you have a day off. I remember once when I streamed Sun Hill... I think it was the last Silent Hill downpour uh, when you were at home. That was once <laughs> on a day off. But uh, trying to stream more lately, so maybe I catch it another day off. No, I just started, John. I literally just started. It's the first screen. I just loaded the game and kept talking. That's what happened. <laughs> so welcome to the stream, John. Good to see you. I'm going to jump, but less than I jumped for Lyubka so she doesn't get jealous. There we go. <laughs> jump that was me jumping i can't really jump with the cat in my lap and all this equipment but imagine i jumped <laughs> so we left the study eventually we arrived back at the intersection some stairs led downward and the corridor branched left and right with a right branch leading back toward the ter terrace did we go up the stairs i think yeah so right branch goes toward the terrace Let's go left. That's where we haven't been. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. We came from the terrace. We continued onward, past where the stairs and the side passage emerged into the main corridor. We found ourselves in front of some ornate double doors. This was the main hall of the manor. We fucking went inside, of course. Yeah, it's Gamuccio. <laughs> it's a me, Gamuccio. I like that creaking. Kid gently pushed the heavy doors open and peeked inside, because that's what she does in this game, apparently. <laughs> Damn, I didn't have time to nail that the Australian accent or listen to anything. We just got out this morning and got back just before the stream, so I'll do my best again. <laughs> Looks like the coast is clear. We stepped into the main hall. Dozens of candles provided a dim and yeah, we were here. A flickering light sending the corners of the room dancing in and out of shadows. Yeah. Several enormous portraits. 
member of Lynx's family. Yeah, I remember what's different in the uh, in the in Chrono Cross. Uh, hey, look, it's different. Yesterday I was looking at him. Ah, cool. I'm pretty sure this was different, but we can always check by going back one stream back. Mm. So what's different is I remembered Riddle wasn't she wasn't Lynx's daughter or adopted daughter as far as I know in Chrono Cross. She was the daughter of General Viper, whose manor this is in Chrono Cross, uh, where Lynx set up his base of operations because I guess he's got cash or people just don't like a gigantic cat man. Who knows? So I, I was busy staring at a painting depicting an intimidating old man when his eyes suddenly widened and he stuck his tongue out at me. No, I was just seeing things again. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It just looked that way because of how the flickering light of the candles was reflecting off, off the glossy oil paintings. I mean, that could totally happen, right? Definitely. Okay, maybe. <laughs> this place gives me the creeps. And get a load of all those ugly mugs. There's nothing for us here. Let's look somewhere else. Neither Magal nor I had any objections. Oh yeah, this is a big thing that I didn't know. Well, I suspected, but I just read, just before the stream, I read some development notes. Try not to spoil the story, but just to see more about the development of the game. Magal, his original name in the Japanese version was Gil, so I wasn't wrong about that. But why they changed it to Magal is because he's fucking Magus from Chrono Trigger. <laughs> just like, in this story. I guess it ties into the ending of Chrono Trigger where Magus loses his memory. He tries to save Shala once again. She sends him back. I'm not sure if she or he himself uh, wipes his uh, memories uh, away and he just goes on with a blank stare and starts his new life. I'm just guessing that ending because it was added later. It, I'm, I'm not sure it was in the original Super Nintendo release. I think it was added for PlayStation or even DS. Not 100% sure on that. But yeah, I think that ties into this. And also, Magus was supposed to be in a Chrono Cross. But it was complex for the developers, from what I read, to incorporate his story into the game. With all the, like, 50-something characters you can <laughs> meet in that game. So they just... Um, they replaced him with a magician called Gil. Gil? Gil? We, I, we just call him Gila here. Um, and... Yeah... We're supposed to have Magus in Chrono Cross. Things you learned, like, 20 years after, but yeah. Yeah, you did say it, sis. You did. It is fucking Magus. Amazing. We left the main hall and returned to the corridor. Oh, that was... That was kid talking, never mind. This place gives me the creeps and get a load of all those ugly... Ugly mugs. Yeah, I can't do that now. There's nothing for us here. Let's look somewhere else. That's my <laughs> that's my Australian accent. No. <laughs> we left the hall and returned to the corridor. Eventually, it led us to an to an intersection. There were some stairs going down and to the right, the dark side passage. We kept we kept going straight on. We arrived back at the terrace. I guess let's go towards the terrace now. After a short walk down the corridor, the terrace came into view. Kept following the corridor, we went out onto the terrace with... Oh, let's follow the corridor. Yeah, that's the first place where I didn't turn, so I was to go, supposed to go right. Short way along the corridor, running from the right-hand side of the terrace, we found an ancient-looking door, again on our right. You should remember all these things. Kid pressed an ear against it, listening for any signs of life. Dead quiet. Don't reckon there's anybody in there. We continued on, we opened the door, we turned back. So the door was on our right. So that means when we exit, we gotta go right again. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. We opened the door. In we go. Kids still her stilled her breath and reached for the handle. The door wasn't locked. It swung slowly open. Her oh, Resident Evil 1.5. What's this room supposed to be? Place is a dump. Kid had poked her head in through the door, taking a quick peek to see if there was anyone inside, and was disappointed by what she found. What did she find? Find? Show us game. Oh, holy shit! The room was large and littered with peculiar-looking machinery and knickknacks, all of which were covered in dust and had seemingly been dumped there haphazardly. 
kind of looks like the engine room from Final Fantasy VI from the Edgar and Sabin's castle. What was it called? You know the one, I think. When they moved the castle underground. Damn it, where Kefka makes the soldier cl clean his boots. <laughs> uh, everything looked like it had been there rusting for a very long time. The ends of the room were completely dark and it was impossible to tell just how big it was or even what the walls and floor looked like. It seemed the manor's inhabitants had turned the old clock tower into a makeshift storage space Figaro some time Castle. ago. Figaro Castle, that's right. Thanks, love. I stepped warily inside. Leave that alone. I looked to over toward Magil and saw Kid trying to pull something from the shadows. It was a huge sword that appeared to be very old indeed. You don't need that old bludgeon, it'll only get in the way. Kinda of imagine him speaking like Joseph from Sun Hill 4. <laughs> Magal, yeah, with a deep voice. But we already gave him a voice in Chrono Trigger, wish I knew it was him. <laughs> and as much of an antique it is, it won't fetch much on the market in that condition. Yeah, reckon it might, you know. There's plenty of collect collectors who just love old beats of junk, old bits of junk. Well, some old bits of junk. Pouting Kid left the sword where, it, where she stood. At least, she put it back down gently. It was then that we heard a voice from the shadows. And what exactly are you doing here, hmm? I just about jumped out of my skin. Who's there? Kid and Magil, Magil turned to face the voice, ready for a fight. A wizened crone emerged from the shadow. What the fuck does that mean? What's a wizened? Well, like she's not like a wizard or like wise or both at once. She was hunched over and wore a hood draped over her face, and apparently she had, she had bats following her. Oh, okay. That's like three or four new words we learned from this game. Pretty cool. So wizened or wizened? Wizened. I'm gonna say. With a Z, wizened. So like shriveled, shriveled old granny came from the darkness. <laughs> wizened, huh? Okay. I could tell at a glance that she wasn't just old. She was positively ancient. <laughs> it, uh, oh, it's just some dudley old bag. What do you think you're doing, sneaking up on us like that? Kid's shoulders relaxed as the tension left her body. Magal, however, continued to give the woman a piercing stare. Oh ho, what an impish little thing you are! Here to visit a friend, perhaps? Not in the dead of night, I suspect. The crone narrowed her eyes. Let's get a closer look at you. Ah, yes. You must be here to get your revenge on Lynx. How did she... My heart jumped. She seemed to know exactly who we were. We were in trouble. What if she sounded the alarm? We'd have to give up on the treasure and run for our lives. What were we gonna do? Defiantly tell her that she was right. Play dumb, just pretend we didn't hear her. She's right. So what if we are? Kid narrowed her eyes right back at the crone. I kind of want to do the Australian accent, but at times, to me, it sounds like I'm doing the 1920s Chicago mobster accent. <laughs> Yo, boss, look at this guy over here. Look at this old crone, boss. <laughs> What's it to you if we're here to get our revenge on old lengthy boy? You're gonna do something about it? <laughs> <laughs> you never change, do you? The crone chuckled madly, her small frame shaking. Ah, the boldness of you. Yes, that's the spirit. You what? Kid looked at the crone, completely confused. I was no less mystified. What the heck are you on about? Oh, it must have been four or five years ago. Yes, it was around that then that an innocent young thief stole into the manor looking to singe Lord Lynx's whiskers. 
All right, John. She couldn't have been much older than ten, now that I think of it. Shocked, my gaze turned to Kid. A wet glint has a had appeared in Kid's eye, but her glare was like ice. It certainly felt as if the temperature in the room had suddenly dropped below freezing. You might even say below freezing point. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, that's what she, they said in other words, but yeah. It's a reference to Al Resident Evil Outbreak for all of those who don't understand. <laughs> With a chuckle, the crone continued her story, pretending not to have noticed the change in mood. She was an orphan, you know. Came after links to avenge a woman who loved her like her own daughter. But all the vengefulness in the world couldn't change the fact that she was only a little girl. She was no match for Lynx's men, sadly, and they quickly captured her. Lynx is the kind of man one would fear to have for an ally, never mind a foe. Had it not been for the timely assistance of a friend of hers, the girl would have certainly been executed. The way the people of the manor told it, the very shadow speeded the girl and rushed into the spirit rushed in to spirit her away. I wonder how much of the tale could be true. I have nothing but sympathy for those who know failure, of course. You can't win all the time. And sometimes, against all odds, Fate really can be foiled, and the clockwork of history sent into disarray. Okay, so the fact that the word fate is capitalized, it's just more connections with Chrono Cross. You know what fate is. So fate, okay, plug your ears if you don't want the Chrono Cross spoilers in 3, 2, 1. Fate is a supercomputer that actually controls the fate of the inhabitants of the El Nido Archipelago. Well, controls. Yeah, kinda. Just tells them, you do this today. They all have to approach this crystal, touch it, and they know what to do. But it only happens to the people of this, like, specific archipelago of, uh, uh, of islands. No, 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 I mean, like, a supercomputer. She was built from parts of the mother brain, if you remember from Chrono Trigger. Sis, uh, mother brain, the side quest, Robo's side quest that we had to do uh, when the big computer wanted to turn Robo back back at least, or, or turn him into a homicidal robot just to kill all humans <laughs> uh, Fate was made from like parts of Mother Brain and upgraded so it's like the most advanced computer they ever made in this world and it was made in the future. And you'll see in Chrono Cross how it actually... Because if I start talking about that, I'm going to sit here an hour and just talk about... Just a bit about fate. I can talk a, a whole hour about it. So basically, yeah. I just mentioned it because as soon as it's capitalized here... It, I'm just guessing. At least it's a progenitor to that story arc. No, the ones I have no patience for are those who do not recognize their failure or who fail and choose to give up as a result. The crone looked up from under her hood, stared Kid directly in the face, and grinned. Kid's anger faded, giving way to a dumbfounded expression. If you wish to steal the jewel from Lynx, if you truly wish to triumph, you will have to let go of a treasure of your own, Kid. For as long as you cling onto it, the hands of your clock will never move. They'll stay exactly where they came to rest all those years ago. Who are you? Ho oh, ho! Oh, me? Why, I'm just an old bag, like you said. I do apologize, I must have taken up a lot of your time with all my babbling. I'll leave you in peace. Oh, but before I go, the crone turned to face me. You seem to be injured, young man. If you wish, I can take a look at your wounds. Oh, damn it, it actually memorizes. It's kind of RPG 
uh, visual no novel. With all the attention suddenly turned toward me, I panicked a little. Alright then, please do. What? Uh, uh, alright then, please do. The crone muttered a few words as her bony fingers drew sigils in the air. A pale, gentle light began to surround my body, filling me with a strange warmth. Strike a light! That's no ordinary spell! Kid was impressed. I felt my wounds healing and heard a nostalgic melody that suited the wounds in my heart. Before I realized it, the crone was gone. Hey! Hey, lady! Kid strained her eyes, scanning the darkness. But there was no one to be seen, and her calls went un unanswered. Who the bloody heck was that? Kid looked like she'd just woken up on the floor of the la laughing pig after a few too many. <laughs> okay, you can tell from the contest, that's probably their tavern. What did she mean about you... Oh, and what did she mean about you having to let go of a treasure? Well, we won't find any answers here. Time... Oh, that's Magal. Well, we won't find any answers here. Time to move on. Magal brought us back down to earth, emotionless as always. It almost seemed as if he thought nothing had happened at all. Yeah, I guess you're right. Kid walked quickly to the door, keen to move on. Because <laughs> I can't really do a squeaky voice, sis. <laughs> You're welcome to come here and voice them with me. <laughs> Hold it, you. Just as I was about to follow Kid out of the room, she jabbed me in the side with her elbow. Like this? No, this isn't the voice for kid. This is this is for a kid, but not the kid. <laughs> you stingy little bugger, Serge. Why didn't you tell her to share some of that healing magic with the rest of us? Classic kid. Ah, that kid. Just kicking me in the nuts and doing shit all the time. <laughs> the door led back into the corridor, which stretched off to the left and right. Rightward lay the depths of the manor, while the way to the left, to our left, led back to the terrace. I like that he actually tells you, don't have to memorize as much as I thought. Right down the corridor. You have the squeakiest voice I ever heard. Well, I'm not sure if that's a... What? If that's a... Over uh, if that's like, you're praising me or making fun of me, but I'll accept it either way. And damn, I just realized I, I, I'm not wearing my glasses, but... It works, I can see the lettering and my head doesn't hurt, so we'll just keep it like this. Mm. Continuing on down the corridor, we came across a rather sturdy looking door on our left. A little fur further on stood a stairway leading upward. Well, this door clearly meant to keep something safe. If there ain't some kind of treasure behind it, <laughs> me name ain't kid. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Remember when I said you should keep your own voice for everything? No, I don't want to. I like making voices. I want to do many voices. Yes, I know it was. Good job, bro. You're growing. There, I can do a Russian accent while doing the you voice. Do the Russian accent. <laughs> there was kind of Norwegian Russian. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the smell of cold hard cash. All right. Did, see, that doesn't work for kid. You'll you'll see kid in Crown Cry. You'll see why. Uh, like Luca and look, Luca. What? Do it for maggot. This voice. <laughs> No, fucking no! You know how sad his story is. I can't, I can't do all that. There, all there. Yeah, it's a. This is a very dark game, though. I gotta say, it's darker than Chrono Trigger and Cross. Well, Cross whoa, is kind. Whoa, whoa, cross, cross, whoa, it's whoa, not darker than Cross. Not from what I've seen so far. <laughs> uh, cross is dark itself because it's derived from this. So yeah, it's not darker than Cross, but it's pretty fucking dark. <laughs> 
Yep, that's the smell of cold hard cash. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm still between a 1920s <laughs> Chicago gangster and like wannabe Australian. <laughs> she muttered to herself as she began to inspect the door more closely. Okay, she smelled the cash. I guess she can smell treasure, so we went inside. But what am I, stupid? Of course it's bloody locked. Kid had tried the door handle a few times before giving it a grumpy kick. <laughs> John's back from the shower. <laughs> Good thing, don't carry my streams to, to shower. You might like fall down, break your neck, man. <laughs> from all the silly shit going on. <laughs> bloody door's got a magic berry on it. And the bloody berry has got a berry of its own to boot. It'll take more than me putting the boot in to get through the hole that. How about we just fucking give her the, the gangster? <laughs> okay, I mean, you, you, you want to watch someone else doing Radical Dreamers? You're welcome. <laughs> just read it. talking to Rock. For a 16 year old. A bloody door's got a magic beer you it. <laughs> and the bloody and the bloody beer has got a beer of its own to boot. It'll take more than me putting the boot in to get through all that. It's in that's pretty shit. It sounds like her parrot. <laughs> <laughs> she lost the lost uh, leg, the leg and her eye. And oh my god. Got a got a pirate parrot. <laughs> And then he started. <laughs> she's not a pirate. She's just a thief. Nobody ever said she's a pirate. I said she's a pirate. She's. she's a, a, a <laughs> I can't breed properly. How do you? What do you mean properly? Is there? A, am I breeding improperly? If you mean, if you mean the the blowy thing, yeah, I don't have a pop filter, so you gotta you gotta keep up with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. The best I can do is to talk on the other side of my lip, but then I'm gonna start to look like. Stallone, then I gotta start the streams with... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to start my streams with... <laughs> I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> or your gangster again. <laughs> your boss, bloody doors, got a magic bear you want. <laughs> How about we just make her gangster, like... Chicago gangster. Gangster! Oh, can I breathe properly while squeaky voice? Well... Well, I'm trying, sis. I'm really trying to breathe properly. <laughs> but now I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm doing some... I don't even know what the accent this is. I'm just gonna do accents and voices. Okay? <laughs> yeah. That's like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> okay. So, people say this game can be, be finished in three and a half hours. Six hours, nine hours, if you're doing everything. For me, I think... I was thinking this is gonna take an episode, too. It's gonna take, like, six episodes, I, I think. <laughs> But we're having top tier fun, yeah, <laughs> as John said, so why not? <laughs> why the fuck not? <laughs> okay, it's got two barriers. I see, then unless we find the key, we don't have a hope of getting inside. Reckon I can handle reckon I can handle a key hunt, especially if that idiot Lynx who's hidden it. If we can find this room, I'll sniff it out in two seconds flat. You just watch. <laughs> <laughs> there was little more we could do here, so we decided to look elsewhere. We continued on. The corridor ended at the foot of some stairs. With Kit in the lead, we headed up upwards. It was dark and the stairwell was narrow. We watched our footing carefully as we climbed. The stone of the steps was worn smooth with age, and I lost count of how many there were as we spiraled onward and upward. An awful sense of foreboding haunted me. I had no idea why, but it felt as though we were marching in, marching to the gallows. When we arrived at the top of the stairs, we were greeted by an old, heavy door looming in silence. All was deathly silent, and the still, clammy air added to the sense of ominous apprehension. Something's very wrong here. I muttered without thinking. I hear cursed whispers from beyond the door, Maggie added, doing nothing to lift the mood. Ah, grow up, will ya? Kid shot back at us der derisively. derisively? What's that? Fifth word, collecting words. It's the wordathon. 
Derisively, while we learned what that is, she was already examining the door. That's like... Stares motherfuckingly. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, she go, huh? What is it, saying? A manner expressing contempt of ridicule. Yeah, she's like... She is staring motherfuckingly at them then. Well, it ain't locked and I don't hear anyone inside. We turned and went back down the stairs. We went inside. Why would we go back? All right, here goes. Kid tried to handle. The door opened and with a slow, heavy swing, revealed what lay beyond. Actually manages to build suspense this game. And I gotta say, the graphics are top-notch for Super Nintendo. I mean, it's not... For, for the game format, it's magnificent. They say that the game pushed the boundaries of Satellaview. And they had to, like, redraw some of the oh my God. graphical um, CG characters and everything, like backgrounds. Probably to fit it into the story space. Because the way Satellaview worked, you had, like, you had this thing that you popped the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom on top of it. And then you had needed a cartridge in which you put another cartridge, which was basically the memory, where you downloaded the games via satellite. And, you know, it added some... It boosted the Super Famicom a bit, but not enough to make, you know, Nintendo 64-style games. Still, this is pretty impressive, I gotta say. I like the graphics. Even, you know, upscaled, they look really cool. It was a small cylindrical room that appeared to be the inside of one of the stone towers. It was completely deserted and there were no windows. Wait. Okay, I just remembered something. <clears throat> What's this supposed to be? Something about this place gives me the creeps. Still standing in the doorway, Kid seemed suddenly taken aback. There might be something in there. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> Oh, that was me. Okay, never mind. A closer look at the bloody empty room. Pa! Might as well, I guess. We, we did climb all them stairs. Kid stepped through the door, grumbling under her breath. And it was a trap. <laughs> I scanned the room and then noticed something on the floor. The flagstones were covered in dozens of narrow scratches, and in places there were, there were thick black stains. Something in the stains spoke of a horror that no amount of scrubbing would ever wash away. A malice and a sadness beyond imagining. There's something written here. Crouching in front of a wall, Magal was inspecting some brownish markings that looked like more of the same stains. Someone's carved letters into the wall and... Oh, that's kid. Someone's... Carved letters into a wall and scramble them using blood magic? Kid had gone over to take a look. Looks pretty old. Hard to read to. Some of it's been wor worn away. Let's see. I cannot hold out much longer. My only hope now is to leave the Acacian Synod in this room. The Acacian Synod? Signet. Suddenly the door slammed shut. We jumped to our feet with a start. So Acacia Dragoons, huh? From above us, we heard an unsettling creaking sound. The walls and floor began to tremble. What the hell is going on? Kid's eyes darted around the room as she desperately tried to figure out what was happening. The creaking sound from above continued and the ceiling moved ominously closer. Oh my god, if I die I have to redo all of this. Up there. Oh, wait, I can save. Thank you, game. Up there! Zoop. Oh, look, it's... You it changed perspective. Cool. Can I even do anything? We walk... We walk... We walk... <laughs> we walk right into a bloody trap. Kid bit her lip. We gotta do something and fast! We don't have time to sit and think about this! No! Oh, I can't even read that fast! What was I gonna do? Surge? K 
kid's shriek rang in my ears and then... Shunk. Ah! The edge of one of the descending blades sliced into my forehead. There was no time. What were we gonna do? Barged the door down. Yar! Kid sprang at the door like an arrow, slamming into it shoulder first. It was far too heavy and her light frame bounced right off it. Damn it! Megal raced towards the door like the wind smashing into it with fero ferocious force. Made a creaking sound and shook from the impact, but stood firm. Desperately, I hurled myself at it too. Mm. The shock of the impact rushed through my body, but it was no good. Meanwhile, the rusty creaking from above continued, as did the ceilings in inexorable journey downward. And to make matters worse, now countless blades were popping in and out. Surge! Magel! This is gonna take the three of us! Timing our blows, we all charged the door at once. Once! Twice! Third time! And then the door was open when we collapsed in a heap in the corridor outside. What? Behind us, we heard the sound of the bladed ceiling grinding on the stone floor of the tower room. The metallic scraping noise it made was awful. We could only look, uh, look on in silent horror at the fate we'd so narrowly be evaded. Okay, that was creepy. <laughs> the machinery continued for a short while before slowly coming to a stop. It seemed the ceiling trap had finally finished its grisly work. Boga me! Talk about a nasty surprise! Is it some sort of execution chamber? Megal continued seeming to be deep in thought. In any case, that writing mentioned Acacia. Yeah, what was all that what was all that about? I asked. The Acacia Dragoons, the elite knightly order serving General Viper, who oh, once yeah. governed the territory of Galesborg to the west. Formerly former knightly order, I should say. Oh wait, they have they're fucking here. I know, like, I know the names and not the places, Galesborg, what the hell is that? They were wiped out more than a decade ago by the lord of this very manor, no less. Uh-huh, thanks for the history lesson, Mag. Kid rose to her feet, patting off the dust. Just hit me, just think about it. If Magal is fucking Magus, and Kid is Shala's clone, Means brother and sister are reunited, but they're not even aware of it. Jesus Christ, that just lends a, a whole new layer to this story. I guess Serge was just there as a narrator. But yeah, he has a, he's the main guy. I don't know, I'm just thinking here, thinking aloud. Too bad we're not here for fairy, fairy tale noites. Come on. We got a lot more exploring left to do. Megal shrugged silently and we headed back to the stairs. With Kid in the lead, we headed downstairs. We went down the stairs and continued straight ahead, eventually coming across a sturdy looking door on our right. Wait, on our right? Toward the terrace. We went inside the door. Well, it, w it was on our right when we were coming. So huh. Yeah, it was. It shouldn't be, but it is. So, how is it? That's probably a, an, an error. And it should be on our left now. Yeah, bloody barrier. And the barrier's got a barrier. Continue down the corridor. door on our left this is where the lady was let's go inside and see what happens we, this is the machinery room I think yeah the room was completely silent and there was no sign of life uh hello any little old ladies in here no no kindly or dears. Oh, that's kid. 
No kindly or dears who know more than they're letting on lurking in the shadows. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Oi, lady, show yourself. The silence spoke volumes. This... Silence spoke. No. <laughs> this is a waste of time, pronounced Maggle flatly, turning on his heel. We left the dusty old storage room, and then we went left, I think. Rattle. Kid stopped us. There's something there. I listened carefully. Rattle, rattle, rattle. A figure appeared in the darkness on the other side of the corridor. It's a skeleton. Okay, so we fight. Can't so really faster. Luckily, he looks like Zombor. We readied ourselves for a fight. Assess. Let's try that. We scared off against the skeleton. It threw the sword it was carrying on the ground and took a step forward. And then it twisted its body into a strange pose. Wait, is it doing what I think it is? It proceeds to contort itself further, adopting a shape that could only be described as highly suggestive. I guess. For a moment, no one knew quite how to respond. What the bloody hell? What should we... Wait, kid, look at Mag. Maggle seemed completely bewitched. There was no way he'd be of any use in, us in this state. Attack. Try to get Maggle to snap up. Maggle! Maggle! Pull yourself together! I tried my hardest to get through to him, but he just carried on staring into space with a vacant look in his eyes. Did he just do the dark... Um, dark... The Dragon Quest? Yes. What is it called? Charmed. Yeah, he was charmed by get by seeing a skeleton's butt. Okay. What the heck is wrong with him? What kind of weirdo gets his head turned by a bloody skeleton? Muttered Kid, turning back to face our foe. Well, can't be helped. It's only a bag of bones. We can't. We can handle this. She lunged, lunged toward the creature. The skeleton brought down it, its sword. The Kid nimbly dodged with a sidestep to the left, then took advantage of her momentum to kick it right in its side. Well. In the spine close to the waist, anyway. Because <laughs> it's a skeleton, get it? Crunch! The bone shattered, separating the skeleton into two halves. Wow. You did it! Piece of cake! The skeleton wasn't quite done yet, though. Supporting its upper body with its left hand, it quickly picked itself back up. And then, with its right hand, it flung its sword at me. What was I gonna do? Dodge to the with the right hand, so dodge to the right. Tried to throw myself out of the path of the oncoming sword. Shunk, but it slides into my thigh as I as it flew past. Arr! I fell to my knee, clutching the wound. Take this! Kid rushed down the skeleton and shattered its skull with an almighty kick. The bones of its upper body fell to the floor with a clatter, and then finally the creature lay still. Hey, that, that was an odd battle. You all right, Serge? Yeah, I think so. That's that dealt with. Now, Kid turned her attention back to Maggle. Can't believe this Drongo, though. Thwack. She brought her fist down hard on his head. Maybe that'll wake you up. Now we're done here, let's get a bloody move on. What was I? Oh, ow. I can imagine him being emotionless even when being in pain. Wait a second. What's that? There was a leather bag. Leather? Leather bag, bag on the ground. Containing some recently cooked meat. Lucky me. I bit into the meat without a moment, moment's hesitation. After devouring the unexpected windfall, I felt a little better. Oi, where's me share? Busted. I uh, busted. I pretended not to hear. I was doing great. I felt like nothing could stop me. Maybe you ain't such a drongo after all. 
just goes to show any old weirdo can make something of themselves if they put their mind into it. She said that already. Kid's eyes glinted with mischief. The door led back into the corridor, which stretched off to the left and right. Rightward lay the depths of the manor, while the way to our left led back to the terrace. Left. Lyubka with a holy trinity. Hydrate, posture check, and stretch. Let's go backwards. Ah, ah. Posture check, good. Yeah, I'm coming behind him. Look at this. I came so fast, his head fell off. Ah, that was good water. And I spilled it for some reason, but it's cool. <laughs> Let's go out to the terrace. I'm, I'm, I don't know where else to go. I think we've been everywhere. <laughs> we want uh, out to the ter onto the terrace, okay? Why is he not playing, though? Return to the quiet terrace overlooking the garden. Hold on a second. Why is he not playing the coming sound? Wait, is it coming? Okay, Eileen, I'm coming. I'm coming. I hope your okay, back yeah. is as red as I remember it. <laughs> I forgot which sound files. See me come? What the fuck? Okay, yeah, that was from Blood Omen. SFX category. Yeah, okay. That's C. Okay, that's C. I meant this one. <laughs> You didn't even see me come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll grow over time, sis. <laughs> As whenever I find something I like that's not, you know, uh, trademark, that's not like under license, I'll add it. Don't worry. We return to the quiet terrace overlooking the garden, and then I talked to Kid. I talked to Maggle. We went back into the manor. I talked to Kid. All right, Serge. You're finally starting to learn how we get how to get your hands dirty, ain't ya? I guess people really can't change if they put in the effort. Kid's eyes shone with an impish playfulness. Well, she hadn't seen anything yet. We should go back inside. We're not here for fun, muttered Maggle. Well, he said that, but I talked to Maggle. You're doing well tonight, Serge. You're less green than when we first met. What I could see of Maggle's face betrayed no emotion, but I thought I could feel the faintest of friendly gazes from beneath the mask. Roy, dust yourself off and let's get moving. We got work to do, said Kid. Well, she said that, but we went back into the manor. Corridor stretched off to the left and right from the terrace. It seemed equally dark and chilly in both directions. Where, which side did we come from? I'm gonna say let's go right down the corridor. Oh yeah, we gotta turn back. Kept okay, following the corridor. We took the corridor leading from the left hand left hand side of the terrace, eventually arriving at an intersection with some stairs. The path to the right led down the stairs. The path to the left was a dark side passage, and the main corridor continued straight onward. So we were downstairs. Main hall, side passage towards the study. Down the stairs, huh? <coughs> Slowly we crept down the staircase, descending deeper into the blackness as we went. At the bottom, the path split. The way to the left continued on to an atrium that resembled a sort of plaza while the path to the right was a winding passageway that trailed off into darkness. I would pause uh, Goblin. Sorry? Goblin. Goblin. Yeah. Last I time. Something. Not as far as I remember, but we'll try. Where is the statue? It's, it's to the right, I think. Okay. We went down the stairs and then took the passage to our right. 
Eventually, we came across an ornate door on the right-hand side. It was Riddle's room, Lynx's daughter. Do we... Do we check that room? Let's go inside. Or continue on our way. Let's continue for now. We went down the dark passageway, eventually finding ourselves at the sturdy-looking, immaculately polished door. It was Lynx's room. Kid's eyes lit up, gleaming in the darkness with savage anticipation. Kid opened the door and slipped inside. Wait, that's not where the statue is. I knew he wouldn't be here. We started looking, started looking for any signs of the key to the vault. Maybe she can help, said Kid, thrusting her chin toward the mirror. I gently pulled the soft cloth from the mirror and started stared into the glass. Oh yeah, I asked about Kid last time. It was dark, like the surface of a lake at night. What is your desire? I asked it where the key to the vault was. I asked it where Lynx was. Kid's measurements? <laughs> Do you know where the key to the vault is? The mirror's reflection rippled and changed to reveal a room with numerous bookshelves. It's where we didn't check the bookshelves. A deep, sonorous voice spoke. You will find the key in the place I have revealed, the study. It is inside a book with a purple cover in the furthest bookshelf from the door. I'm not sure you would be able to get it from that point. It was purple. Yeah. The image of the study vanished from the mirror and the voice went silent. It appears the spirit has left for another mirror, commented Magel. To the study then. Oh, it said, that he did say they, they move from mirror to mirror. Uh. As I made to leave the room, a low voice rumbled through the air, stopping me dead in my tracks. Beware, he knows. What is the voice of the mirror again? Was it the voice of the mirror again? What did it mean? Hurry up or we're leaving you behind, Serge, called Kid from outside. Flustered, I rushed after her. Oh, so Lynx knows, probably. That we're here. Yeah, he's supposed to know. The corridor stretched out beyond the door. The study was upstairs, right? We retraced our steps. Eventually, we came across an ornate door to the left side, hand side. It was Riddle's room, Lynx's daughter. We continued on our way. Suddenly, Kid stopped in her tracks. Something's there! I quickly looked around to see what it was. There was nothing behind us or in front of us. Where could it be? And then, just as I was trying to figure it out, the wall began moving. Our rectangular section opened up and swung around, revealing two enormous goblins clinging to the back. It was like something from one of those stories about assassins sneaking around in old castles. You! Goblins? screamed Kid. They definitely looked like goblins to me. Maybe a touch on the large side? There were four in total. The two in front of us and two, the two that had appeared behind us, cutting off our path of escape. Magal rushed toward the two behind us. Meanwhile, Kid leapt at the two in front, holding her knife in both hands. I drew my knife and rushed to Kid's side. Crash! The spike ball of Goblin's morning star smashed into the ground, crushing the stone flooring. Ass, 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 in. <laughs> <laughs> After the booty. Yeah. Yeah, I, I figured that yesterday in the battle, yeah. It's kind of like, that's why I say it's not just, it's not just, um, what are they called again? Visual novel game? It's a visual novel RPG game, which, you know, just give me anything RPG, anything. It'll be good. <laughs> this is pretty good. Hey, Gavin. Welcome to the stream, man. It's been a while. How are you, Gavin? Gavin Wintour. 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 It's almost sounds French. <laughs> 
crushing the stone flooring. Kid nimbly leapt up into the air, evading the attack and landing on the goblin's exposed hand. She swung upward toward the goblin's head, plunging her knife into its left eye. Ouch! Ew! Then she flipped backwards and stood ready for the next attack. That was Kid's style. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Wait, that's, a, that's an achievement in Alan Wake. I like that achievement. Yeah, before you unlock it, it says float like a butterfly, dot dot dot. But once you unlock it, it adds sting like a bee. Quite wonderful, huh? I'm good, Gavin, I'm good. Uh, busy as a bee, as of lately, I'm doing a lot of things in life. Um, after work and like driving school, school, school. I want to get a higher degree diploma and all that, but, uh, you know, aside from being busy, I'm pretty good, I gotta say. Happy to hear you're good as well, my man. Isn't that right, Pussy? Yes, it is. She woke up for some reason. I forgot that happens when she opens her mouth. <laughs> The next goblin charged in, swinging its morning star toward me. Tried to copy Kid's trick. Yeah. If she can do it, so can I. I jumped the moment just before the attack landed. The morning star crashed into the stone tiles. All I had to do next was to land on the goblin's hand and finish it off with my knife. Whoops! I messed up my landing, tripped up on the hand instead, and wound up flat on my back. Ouch! <laughs> She's one of the best thieves in the realm, right? Well, not fighters. Not you gotta thief. If you're if you're... She bit her hand. <laughs> like that, so she's not. Ah, she's not the best, but one of the best. That's not quite how I meant for it to happen, I thought. And then I looked up. The goblin was towering over me, swinging its morning star over its head once more. I'm done for. My life was flashing before my eyes. But then... A knife shot through the air, plunging into the back of the goblin's hand. Ouch. This was my chance. Yeah. While the goblin was distracted, I seized my chance and leapt toward it, aiming my knife directly at its heart. A thud. The blade disappeared into the goblin's chest. But then, clunk, something struck me squarely on the head. Oh wait, I know what happened. It slowly dawned on me as I faded out of consciousness. The dying goblin had dropped its morning star on me. I hope I didn't die here. A light darted through the darkness. And again. And again. Surge! Oi! Wakey wakey! No slipping on the job, mate! Kid was slapping me back and forth across my face. <laughs> Jesus Christ, kid. Ow! Ow! Hey, quit it! Talk about a rude awakening. Ah, shut you pie hole. You should be thanking your lucky stars. <laughs> thanking your lucky stars, you woke up to see a ravishing beauty and not some goblin guard. Ravishing beauty? You mean raging egomaniac? Was what I wanted to say, but I knew better than to risk it. <laughs> really submissive to kid in this story. I was doing great. I felt like nothing could stop me. Maybe you ain't such a drongo after all. Just goes to show any old weirdo can make something of themselves if they put a mind into it. So, she's saying that after each battle? Kid's eyes glinted with mischief. Surge awakening. <laughs> we continued down the corridor until we reached an intersection. There was a left turn in the corridor leading, up, leading to some stairs going upward. The corridor also continued straight on toward the entrance to a large plaza-like atrium. Up the stairs, please. The passage to the stairway was short. With Kid leading the way, we started to climb the narrow staircase. At the top, we found another intersection. Taking the corridor to the right would lead us to a dead end with a large door, where the way to the left led to the terrace. The narrow side passage in front of us was open. Towards the study. We headed down the side passage. At the end of it, we came to an old, immaculately polished door. 
This was the study. We went inside. Oh, I love how moves. I love it. Right, let's find the key. This key. Light on her feet as always. Kid moved into the center of the room. Where'd the mirror say it was again, Serge? She, she was asking me. How's I supposed to remember? The book with a blue cover. Oh, you gotta remember. Actually, yeah, I remember. The mirror, purple in the fire bookcase. It was. Look at all the options it gives you. So many, uh, so many ways to fuck up. Uh, mm, I think it was supposed to be in the one, supposed to be one with a purple cover in the furthest bookcase. All right, let's see. Seeming to take my word for it, kid made for the case in question. Right, this is the one. Purple cover, purple cover. Aha, uh -huh, this has got to be it. The kid pulled out the book from the bottom shelf. Magal and I watched as she opened it. The pages were hollowed out, and hidden inside was an old key decorated with strange symbols. Nailed it! I just imagine fucking Prompto. <laughs> you know he says that when you win a battle. Nailed it, because it's Australian. <laughs> Nailed it. Nice one, Serge. Kid snatched the key from inside the book. Inside of the book. Right, time to finally get a look at this treasure. Having having got what we came for, we left the study. But where we, where the fuck do we put the the locked door? We couldn't open. Yeah. Okay. We made our way back down the dark side passage leading from the study. So you really gotta you gotta. Uh, yeah, that's why I asked you if you want to see the map. Yeah. No. No. I don't. I don't want to see anything. But from what I'm just sharing, what I got so far. So even though we were in the room with the mirror we didn't ask it for the key because we didn't know we needed the key yeah. until we back, went back yeah. it's interesting because i read today that uh they had the the initial idea was to make it like a survival adventure but then after resident evil 1 came out they changed the plans and turned it into a visual novel you can kind of see it would be resident evil-ish if uh yeah. well it would yeah. sons the zombies of course but i can totally imagine it in the same yeah. gameplay style yeah we would have loved that game, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. We made our way back down the dark side passage leading from the study. Eventually, we arrived back at the intersection. Some stairs led downward and the corridor branched left and right with the right branch leading back toward the terrace. So, we took the right branch to the terrace. For a short walk down the corridor, the terrace came into view. We kept following the, uh, we kept following the corridor. If they put zombies and viruses, nah. I mean, just, just in general, that gameplay style. I love that gameplay style that Resident, the early Resident Evils have. A lot of stories could be made with it. I don't know. Martian Gothic was one of the games that tried to imitate that style. It was very close, but it wasn't like it was. It was pretty. I know you're not serious, of course, but I'm just. I just like talking <laughs> about these things. Martian Gothic was so close; it had a great setup. So Martian Gothic, what? it's called Martian Gothic what? Unification. Basically, you have three characters. You play with all three of them. You can swap between them. But the issue was, um, it was clunky. It was so clunky. And the biggest thing in that game was, you, you can never have two characters in the same room. If two of the characters um, end up in the same room, it's game over because they have some kind of a virus that. Uh, um, Basically, if they if they're in the same room, they they die and it's game over for you. Apocalypse happens. God knows. I'll still drink it. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. Um, Silent Hill did it well. What else? Kodelka. Kodelka. That's the game I tried to play like twice or three times. Uh, always having trouble with the second disc. Uh, that's the one that combined JRPG with. Resident Evil style. So I can imagine this going so like something like that. Like Kudelka. People who know Kudelka know what I mean. Imagine Chrono with zombie and mad dogs and crows. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it was like that in uh, Megas's Castle, wasn't it? With the creepy kids and everything. Well, that was, that was more like paranormal, but still. 
Spitting gooey dude. Wait, wh who's the spitting gooey dude? I'm trying to think what she means. There's the door. On our right, white. Clock tower, we continued on. But spitting gooey dude. Oh, you might think of Nyx, the final boss from Outbreak File 2. We returned to creeping down the darkened hallways as silently as we could. Or would? Could. Continuing on down the corridor, we came across a rather sturdy looking door on our left. That's the one. A little further on stood the stairway leading upward. Well, this door's clearly meant to keep something safe. If there ain't some kind of treasure behind it, me name ain't kid. Yeah, Nyx. <laughs> There's something similar in Final Fantasy VIII, which is also a square game, right? There's a zombie president. Well, you think it's a real president you gotta assassinate, but then, like, turns out it's a zombie president, and he's zombie. He's as much zombie as Nyx is. So Nyx is also bioweapon, right? But uh, that's what kind of zombie this guy is. President Dealing. I remember that part. Well, I remember a lot of from Final Fantasy VIII, but that was a striking part. I was like, we have zombies in Final Fantasy now? Well, sure, why not? It worked. <laughs> yep, that's the smell of cold hard cash. All right. She muttered to, her, muttered her to herself as she began to inspect the door more closely. We went inside, because now we have the key. This should do it. Kid slipped the key we'd found into the lock. Yeah, I can't wait to start playing Final Fantasy games, but that's gonna be something I'll do for a whole year. I'm not gonna start doing Final Fantasy games probably until I finish with these things I'm doing uh, right now, the schools and everything, because that's something I want to do every day. Those games are long. It's like, they're as long as, on average, they're as long as Chrono Trigger, because, you know, it's a JRPG. You'll see, well... If I can do cross, I can do the rest. But yeah, I can't wait. And I'm gonna do it in true hippie Tesla fashion. From Final Fantasy 1 to whichever is the last one when I do it. Probably 16 is gonna come out by that time. <laughs> Lines of magical light flashed across the surface of the door and vanished as various magical barriers were dispelled. Up, down, left, right, blue, red, green. Every door color under the sun. Oh, every color. There's no door. Every color under the sun. And then all was quiet, and the darkness of the manor returned. Roy, we're in. With a creak, the heavy door gently swung open. As soon as I saw what was inside, I gave a gasp. Kid stepped inside. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Crash Bandicoot, kind of. Wow! Wow, we've, we've hit the motor load. Holy shit, that's a lot of treasure indeed. Out of the darkness loomed a veritable mountain of gold, silver, priceless works of art, and exquisite trinkets. Kid looked as, sh as if she were on the verge of drooling at the sight of it all. But what thief wouldn't have been? After all, this was the kind of hoard that few people would ever come across in their lifetime. The smallest fraction of this was this vast mound of riches would have seen even the most careless spendthrift set for life. Oh shit, that's a lot of money then. Our goal is the frozen flame. Ignore the rest. Magal spoke with an icy dedication to our mission. He had not even batted an eyelid at the sight. At, uh, he had e not even batted an eyelid. Eyelid. At the site that greeted us. Damn, that's a um, weird composition of words. Yeah, yeah, I know. She was disappointed, of course. But she soon set about scanning the room for the object of our hunt. Wait, is that it? Look on the, pe look on the pedestal over there. I turned to see what kid was pointing at. Are we gonna find it? Yes! 
There it was, a small yet perfectly formed jewel that gave off a pale red light. A jewel that looked like a flickering fire suspended in time. Which is, which basically is, if you remember, I told, said this before, it's a piece of lava that broke off when he fell from the sky. And it has tremendous powers, which, you know, it's gonna have a lot of impact on the story of Chrono Cross. Not sure here what's gonna happen, but yeah. And even the, so this is the same track that plays in Chrono Cross, uh, it's called The Frozen Flame. The Frozen Flame! Silently, Magal walked towards the pedestal. I called out. Wait, we have to be careful. You're right. This is Lynx we're dealing with. It may very well be trapped. We should be on our guard. Um, I, I'm just, just... Like, if Magus is here, I'm just... Thinking he might be after the Frozen Flame because it... He thinks he could help him save Shala. I also have heard people pronounce her name Scala, which just doesn't sound right. Would you say Scala or Shala? Yeah. Urgh. We need to be quick about this. But fine, have it your way, grumbled Kid looking away. Magal examined the pedestal for a short while then paused. Hmm, we were wise to be cautious. Placing his left hand on the base of the pedestal, he muttered an incantation, drawing quick sigils in the air with his right hand. Some glyphs appeared on its smooth surface and for a moment blazed brightly. There, now we can proceed. Magal calmly reached out and grabbed hold of the red jewel. Yeah, it was some kind of a magical trap. Dun da da! <laughs> Did I just do that? Surge and friends obtained the frozen plane. You mean? Ra -ta 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 -ta. No, wait, that's the wrong game, but sure. <laughs> Phew! We managed to get what we came for without anything horrible happening to us. I breathed a sigh of relief and turned again to Magal. He was staring silently at the jewel in his hands. Magal, we did it! Let's get out of... Before I could finish, the frozen flame crumbled to dust. <laughs> this flame was a fake. Lynx must be keeping the real one somewhere safe. What? Suddenly, a siren rang out. The room was flooded with light and metal bars ja jam no, slammed down in front of the door. I turned with a gasp to see Kid frozen, an ornate crown in her hands and a wide-eyed look of awkward shock on her face. Did you touch the treasure, Abu? It's like in Aladdin. That's the Abu. first thing I thought. Dun dun dun! Kid and friends obtained a golden crown too. <laughs> You're kidding me, right? You had to go and... You! You complete... Complete bonehead! I let rip with a steam of choice insults. <laughs> in my head, that is. Of course. Metallic parrots in the four corners of the room suddenly came to life. Flapping their wings and screeching. Rah! Thieves! Thieves! Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Thieves! I can't do it. Yeah, and <laughs> come, Kitty. Iago, you mean Gilbert Godfrey? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't right now. Come on, Kitty. Odi mats, mats mats. I didn't ever post that discussion. Odi mats mats. Bring your cloud of hair over here. Look at this. Look at this shit. Okay, do it your way, Kitty. We're in trouble. Those things are going nowhere, said Magal, inspecting the bars covering the door. Although, to look at him, you wouldn't have thought there was anything wrong. Which way? Which way? The parrots! The parrots! To the vault! To the vault! We heard voices in the distance. The manor guards were coming. 
kid dived behind the pile of gold coins. Find somewhere to hide. In a panic, I looked around the room. There was a large chest sitting wide open next to a pillar. I rushed to empty it out, then plunged in headfirst and closed the lid. Captain! Captain! There's no sign of anyone in there! No sign! Strange, peculiar. No one has even ever escaped before. None have ever fled the mousetrap's clutches. None. I gently pushed up the lid of the chest and peeked through the gap. There were five goblins wearing suits of armor unlocking the gate and about to make their way inside. One of the goblins looked around the room, jerking his neck as he peered into the shadows. Er, uh, Cap'n, what if actually was a mouse this what if it actually was a mouse this time? Chef was grumbling about mouses the other day, Cap'n. Mouses. <laughs> a mouse, a rodent, a rat. Would a teeny tiny thing like that really have sprung the trap? replied a stocky, plump looking goblin who must have been the captain. He didn't seem convinced. That was when I heard a strange but oddly familiar sound from a corner of the room. Squeak, squeak. It was coming from where Kid was hiding. <laughs> Startled, the troop of goblins stopped and looked at each other. For a moment, none of them spoke. Eventually, the goblin captain rubbed his chin through his jaw, jowls, oh, the face mask, and offered his thoughts. Mouses! I'm sure Chef was complaining about cats! Meow! Meow! That voice again. Again. Silence. The goblins only looked at each other. Funny you, funny you say that, Captain. The way I heard it, it weren't mouses or cats. It was a Hecran. Oh, Hecran, wait. They're, they're extinct, I think, in this world. Because uh, you can find a hacker and bone in Chrono Cross. An awkward silence followed. In my mind's eye, I could see Kid racking her brains to work out what a hacker was. I smell a rat, by which I mean a thief. Following the captain's lead, the guards reached for their weapons. And then... Hick, 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 ran, hick, a ran. Listen, it really is a Kakran by heck. That proves it. The Goblin Guard grinned and nodded to each other. <laughs> Cheeky little devil, surprise me there. Let's get out of here, boys. The Goblins f filed out of the vault. I breathed a sigh of relief. Breathed? Breath. Breath. But is that how you spell it? I, Because that's an irregular verb. Yeah, okay. And then they came charging back in again with a mighty roar. There's no such thing as Hecarans! What, you... Ah, uh -huh, that's her. What, you sneaky little buggers! Roared Kid, leaping out from behind the pile of gold coins. You're the one to talk, thief! Brandishing their weapons menacingly, the goblins moved slowly forward, forcing Kid into a corner. I quietly eased, opened the lid of the coffer, and slipped out. Can't leave you anywhere, can I? I muttered to myself. I knew Kid could handle herself, but I didn't fancy her odds against a whole troop of heavily armed goblins. For a moment, I wasn't sure what to do, but then I made up my mind. I had to save Kid. Right, I had to save Kid. There was no way I was gonna abandon our friend in need. Sure, no way. <laughs> Even if it meant facing off against a group of five goblin guards, I'd find a way to come out on top. I hope. I drew the knife from my belt and leapt into the middle of the room. Hey, snot for brainses! Over here! The goblins all turned to look at me at, at the same time. Ten beady, cruel little eyes, all staring daggers at me. Fool! In a hurry to die, are we? I gulped and wondered if making a run for it might have been a better plan for of action after all. Ah, humans are so, so stupid! The goblin captain chuckled and licked his teeth. 
Yep, this one's got a death wish, all right. Why else would he be so stupid as to come after Lord Lynx's treasure? Ha! Huh. That's a first being called dumb by a bloody goblin. Try acting tough when you're crying to your mom later on. Judging by Kid's response, she wasn't feeling massively threatened. And you tell her it was Kid who kicked your teeth, teeth in. So you're Kid, are you? The sneaky little snip slippery little thief we've heard so much about. The goblin narrowed his eyes. Hee <laughs> hee hee! Lord Lynx, I'll be thank Lord Lynx will be thanking me from now until my retirement when I bring him your head on a silver platter. The goblin captain pulled his morning star from his waist and started swinging. You don't know why, who you're meshing with. We ain't no ordinary goblins, sweetheart. We're Lord Lynx's elite guard, the goblins that gobble other goblins. That's right, the Gob Squad. Oh, quit shooting your mouth off and let me stick a boot in it. And with that, Kid launched into a laughing, lightning fast spinning kick. Laughing fast? <laughs> Her boot connected with the side of a goblin's head with a crack, sending the creature tumbling to the ground. Get him, lads! The boy looks scrawny, start with him! The goblin captain spun the heavy metal ball of his morning star in the air. Pardon. Glorious gob strike! Ah. Aye aye! The goblins charge across the room in response to their captain's command. Wait, that's that their battle cry? Glorious gob strike? Gob strike and coming goblin rush towards me, I dodge the attack. I swiftly dodged the attack, can't read in the battle. The morning star brushed past my cheek. I don't know how, but I managed to escape unscathed. I lost my balance though and fell clumsily to the floor. God damn it, Serge, can you do anything right? I tried attacking, I tried parrying, I tried fucking dodging, I tried singing my way out of the battle. Each time he fucks it up. Magil conjured up a black wind. Which surged forth like a shearing tempest. What? That's not. Yeah, he's supposed to be. Yeah, but this is. He's got a different backstory here. He's a musician. A what? He didn't die musician. in another dimension. He's not. He's a. He's a very uh, competent musician, but very clumsy fighter. I just got a point. Be a bard of the group, huh? Yeah. I just want to point out that the Magal or Magus conjured up a black wind. Remember what he said to the group in Chrono Trigger? The black wind howls, one of you will shortly perish. <laughs> How does a human know a spell like that? Who are you? The goblin was quickly silenced as the, as the rushing wind tore through it, and it collapsed to the floor with a final shriek. Magal looked down at his victim, his expression unchanged. Another goblin flew down from overhead. Bombs away! With a growl, it sent its morning star swinging from above. I jumped up for a counterattack. I was better off attacking than trying for a clumsy dodge. I tackled the goblin head on. And bounced helplessly off of its enormous rock like body, smashing headfirst into the floor. Ah! The shock of the impact jolted through my body. Like, whenever I make that uh, sound effect, I just think of Angry Video Gamer. Ah! Fuck! <laughs> Magal conjured up a black wind which surged forth like a shearing tempest. How does a human know a spell like that? Who are you? The goblin was quickly silenced as the rushing wind tore through it, and it collapsed to the floor with a final shriek. Nagel looked down at his victim, his expression unchanged. When when the bits repeat like this, it kind of reminds me of uh, epic, like prose writing, you know. Yeah. 
Wait, wait, go up so I can come and go. I readied myself to parry the attack. I just about managed to push my enemy's attack aside and try to strike back with my knight. Yes, love? Yeah, I meant, yeah, but I also meant like Epske Pesme, really Stalinsky Pesme, Kawa Yoli on his mic. Prose writing, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, like that. I just about managed to push my enemy's attack aside and try to strike back with my knife. Landing a heavy blow right in the goblin's unguarded flank. Oh, nice. The goblin's face crumpled in agony. Magal conjured up a black wind which surged forth like a shearing tempest. Uh, same line. Same line. Another goblin flew down from overhead. Bombs away! Wait, this is the fourth one, right? Mago killed two and I killed one. With a growl, it sent its morning star swinging above. Jumped up for a counterattack. I was better off attacking than trying. Oh, okay. And then Mago will kill it. Well, that's actually the sixth one, I think. So Mago keep using the same spell. Long live Lord Lynx! Glory to the Gob Squad! With his final words, the goblin collapsed. That was the last of them. Oh, we killed them all. We made it! Ha! Huh. Piece of cake, said Kit, putting a brave face on things as she wiped the sweat from her brow with her arm. And then she stopped and looked at me. Serge, what were you thinking, ya great drongo? Getting the goblins to come after ya like that? You really didn't have to, you know? Still, thanks. Can't say I was happy to see your crazy ass jumping like that. You actually sound like you're glad. <laughs> She was actually smiling at me. Who, me? Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you. You sound surprised, but glad. Kid's smile kindled a light inside me, and with it, a peculiar warmth that came in ripples. And then, Magal stepped in. Save the cheddar for later. We can't waste any more time here. What's the voice we gave him in Chrono Trigger? He spoke British-like. Uh, more like two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The frozen flame must be somewhere else in the manor. Alright, mate. Thanks for stating the obvious. It's not more a bloody fool that Lynx has to make things so bloody difficult for everyone. Kid spun on her heel and made a sulky about face for the door. Suddenly her attention returned to the pile of defeated goblins. Hmm. This bunch of drongos said their lynx is a lead guard, right? Bet they've got some nice loot on them. With that, she star started unceremoniously rummaging through the fallen captain's pockets. She was like a hyena sniffing for scraps. Hello, hello, what's this? She found an old metal plate. Resembled an open hand. It was covered in runes. Okay, we know where this is for. Reckon this might open some other magic door somewhere. Well, never know when it might come in handy. Either way, finders keepers. The plate vanished into Kid's pocket. Okay, so now we can make it better. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Looks like there's nothing else worth taking, unless you count pocket lint and bits of string. She rose to her feet and looked around the room. You know... It's a real shame to live the rest of all this loot just l sitting here unloved. <laughs> eh, suppose we can come back for it whenever. Kid turned to face us and flashed a grin. All right, lads, let's get a move on. It ain't gonna be dark forever. That handshake plate is our only clue for now, muttered Bagel seemingly for himself, to himself. And with that, we left the vault in search of the real frozen flame. Okay, we did something. Now I gotta find the... Uh, 
the statue of yeah. truth. The corridor outside the room stretched off to the left and right. The path to the right led to the terrace. The left led to a staircase going upward. So, toward the terrace. It was either on this floor or the floor below, but I think... Yeah. We continued down the corridor, eventually coming across the door on our left. The corridor continued on back towards the terrace. Which door was this? Never mind, we'll keep going. Ah, uh, let's go in just to make sure. Oh, we continued, never mind. After a short walk on the, down the corridor, the terrace came into view. We kept following the corridor. Took the corridor leading from the left hand side to the terrace, eventually arriving at an intersection with some stairs. The path to the right led down the stairs, the path to the left was a dark side passage, and the main corridor continued straight onward. So it wasn't... it was still downstairs, yeah, I think. We went down the stairs. Slowly we crept down the staircase, descending deeper into, the bl into blackness as we went. At the bottom, the path split. The way to the left continued onto an atrium that resembled the Sword of Plaza, while the path to the right was a winding passageway that trailed off into darkness took the passageway to the right. We went down the stairs and took the passage to our right. Eventually we came across an ornate door on the right hand side. It was Riddle's room, Lynx's daughter. We continued on our way. We went down the dark passageway, eventually finding ourselves at a sturdy looking, immaculately polished door. It was Lynx's room. The kid's eyes lit up, gleaming in the darkness with savage anticipation. Yeah. So it's not here. Nope. We turned back. The corridor stretched out beyond the door. We retraced our steps. Eventually we came across an ornate door on the left hand. It was Riddle's room. Leading the group as usual, Kid suddenly stopped. What's that? She jabbed her finger at something in the darkness. Oh, yeah. Straining my eyes, I could see a pale white bundle of something shaking in the shadows. Huh, that's strange. I moved in front of Kid to try to get a better look. And then suddenly, the strange presence started crawling across the floor towards us in an unbelievable, at an unbelievable speed. I didn't have time to brace myself. The white figure reached my foot, then reared up to its full height. It was a skeleton. Ooh, I like how he assembled himself. The skeleton and I stood face to face, its empty eye socket staring straight at me. Or seeming to, at least. Assess the situation. The skeleton stopped over and leered at me. I was stunned by the strangeness of the gaze coming from the two black pits of its skull. Yet he has only one red eye. And then... He leapt at me before I could react. Er, I mean, ah! I let out a scream. Its ribs loomed up in front of me. I shoved hard with both hands, desperately trying to loosen the firm hold it had taken on my head with both arms, and set it crashing to the ground. It clattered to the floor in a pile of jumbled bones. But then I noticed its head was nowhere to be seen. Serge, your hood! I reached up with a start to find the skull had clamped onto my hood with its teeth. What was I gonna do? I freaked out. I grabbed it, tried to pull it off. Ow! Panicked, I tried to pull the skull out of my off my hood, but its jaw was locked tight and it wouldn't budge an inch. That was when I heard Maggle snap at me. Stand still! Crack! My head exploded with stars as Maggle's foot slammed into the back of my head. I gasped for a moment. I thought I was gonna pass out. The skull, meanwhile, shattered to pieces like an eggshell. Bits of broken bones scattered down from the top of my head. The rest of the skeleton froze mid-charge and fell apart. The bones lay motionless on the floor. I love how you can have so many different outcomes with this. Nice one, Mag. Yeah, thanks. You didn't have to kick me in the head, though. 
We're finished here. Let's get moving. Ow. Oh. I was a mess. My body was screaming with pain, and I felt like I might pass out at any moment. But I took much more punishment from Lynx's minions. My night was going to be over pretty soon. Ah, oh, she says the same thing. He ain't such a drongo. Continue down the corridor until we reach the intersection. Up the stairs to the entrance to life. Let's try to get into the atrium. You've got to be kidding me, shouted Kid, glaring at me. Are you telling me to swim through a bloody lake of pyranodons? Yeah, you can count me out, mate. How am I supposed to charm me victims with big chunks bitten out of me? I guess she had a point. Here's a better plan. Why don't we go back to Beardy and try sticking something down his gob? Sure enough, she pulled out her bundle of odds and ends. There we go. So we just go there and go to Beardy, okay? Do I have to? I asked, knowing the answer. Which was probably just as well, since Kid only glared at me in response. My hand hovered for a moment before I finally reached for something. I chose... The hand-shaped plate. Yep. Are we missing something here? Nope. Everything's there. We can finally do this, I think. So the hand-shaped plate... I took the hand-shaped metal plate we'd found. After taking another look at the runes, I was no closer to working out what they might mean. Here goes nothing. I stuck the plate into the mouth of truth on the into the mouth of truth's marble maw. As soon as I did so, its eyes rolled upward and the wall gave a light judder. A low rumbling sound came from the sculpture's mouth. This, indeed, is the ultimate truth of the universe. Did you hear something? Y yeah I watched the mouth of truth in confusion. Its great marble tongue lolled out almost like a snake. It coiled around the plate, seizing it and pulling it deep inside. What the? What's going on? In a panic, I looked to Maggle for answers. S So I'm just trying to... Okay. Seems this ineffable truth of the universe has left even the mouth of truth tongue-tied. Tongue-tied. Magal answered in his usual deadpan manner. I think he might even have been trying to make a joke. Yeah, he, he was cheerier than usual. Hang on. Hang on. That, so that plate thingy revealed the truth of the universe? And... And you went and crammed it down Beardy's gullet? You Do you realize how much we could have sold that for? <laughs> Kid kicked the floor in frustration and snapped her fingers. And then, drains on all sides of the room suddenly opened wide. Oh, there we go. The red water formed eddies as it sank away. Helpless, the piranodons were washed away with the current. Soon, only trickles of water were left, slowly dripping away. So they're basically playing underbelly of how big files you are. <laughs> well, that's a stroke of luck, ain't it? Guess we won't be sleeping with the fishes tonight, grinned Kid, looking at the empty pool. There, I, s I knew it. She's a 1920s Chicago gangster. We crossed the drained room, making for the exit on the other side, and pressed on. Finally, we, we fucking moved on. We went through the atrium and continued down the corridor, before finding ourselves at a fork in the road. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Serge complained that he's pretty beat up and he won't make it for, for a long time. The corridor stretched off to the left and the right. Let's go left first. Suddenly the, dark, the darkness felt opaque. 
something like a thick day haze floating in the air in front of us. It's like it's like the wind from Chrono Trigger, isn't it? And then it took form, like something blowing smoke into a person-shaped bottle. It was robed in a ragged shroud and its sunken eyes glinted menacingly. It was the burning hatred that lingers even after death has given even after death given form. A being driven by a hatred for all living things. A, a ghost, bugger, that's us out, Kid bit her lip. There wasn't anything she or I could do to deal with an enemy that had no physical body. A voice boomed out behind me. Magal had begun casting a spell. Jump behind Magal. Magal cast me a glance, continuing his incantation without missing a beat, then grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and threw me at, at the ghost. Arrgh! I emitted a strangled scream of horror that I'd probably never be able to repeat again. And then I br tried to brace myself before I crashed face first into the wall. But the impact I was expecting never came. The core of the ghost, where its face seemed to be, had more substance than the rest of it. And I didn't just slip through it like I thought I would. I oozed through it like I was stuck in some kind of goo. Ye gods, it was disgusting. More disgusting than anything I'd ever known. And it was impossibly cold. It felt like uh, it was draining all the heat right out of my blood. Like it was draining my life force itself, in fact. I struggled to break free, but I could find no purchase in this gooey ectoplasm. Sounds like a Metroid to me. The coldness became more and more intense, and soon I didn't even know what cold meant anymore. This could be it for me, I thought. I was consumed by despair. And then there was a surge of heat through the muscles of my neck in the place where Magal had grabbed me just a moment before. At the same time, his incantation echoed in my mind, and my vision was filled with a clear blue light. And I went blind, apparently. Serge! Oi, Serge! You still with us, Moit? Someone was slapping me around the face. Someone who seemed to be enjoying it immensely. Kid! Stop it! Damn you! I leapt up to my feet, wide awake, again in, my, in an instant. Mag, did you really have to use me like that? When dealing with foes who attack the mind, it is simplest to lure them in with bait and use their intended praise consciousness as a conduit in order to make an assault from the astral plane. A direct magical attack would have meant a lengthy battle, a far less elegant solution, he replied without a trace of guilt. All right, let's keep moving, Kid gave the order to continue seemingly completely oblivious to my brush with death. Papa, did you die? Oh. I was a mess. My body was screaming with pain and I felt like I might pass out any moment. If I took m much more punishment from Lynx's minions, my night was going to be over pretty soon. He's full of shit. <laughs> oh, okay, don't, don't. So we finished another battle. How do I heal myself? Well, by chance. By chance, yeah, that's I mean, what he says. Like the lady, like I, when I used the tincture, yeah. We continued down the corridor, eventually reaching... It's important to sit with and stuff like that. Sit? I'm gonna sit with people? Oh. Okay. Eventually reaching an old, rather, st uh, rather sturdy looking door. Bloody marvelous! Another bloody door with a bloody magic barrier in it. On it. Wonder what's inside. Me sixth sense tells me it ain't treasure. Kid whispered back to us as she examined the door. I suspect that this is the manor's dungeon, replied Magal, his eyes closed in concentration. I can hear the sound of someone moaning in the darkness on the other side. 
but there is nothing we can do, and thus it is of little con concern to us now. Let us turn back. With no way of getting through the door, we retra retraced our steps down the corridor. After making our way down the dark corridor, we came to a branch in the path. The path to the right would take us back to the atrium with the fountain. The corridor, was al the corridor also continued directly ahead, but the way was completely enshrouded in darkness. We went right toward the atrium, we continued straight on. Yeah, continue straight on. Suddenly, Kid stopped in her tracks. Ah, oh, another battle. Something's there. Quickly looked around to see what it was. There was nothing behind us or in front of us. Where could it be? And then, just as I was trying to figure it out, the wall began moving. A rectangular section opened up and swung around, revealing two enormous goblins clinging on to the back. It was like something from one of those stories about assassins sneaking around in old, class, in old castles. You goblins! screamed Kid. They definitely look like goblins to me. Maybe a touch on the large side. There were four in total. Two in front of us and two that had appeared behind us. Cutting our path... Or cu cutting off our path of escape. Meanwhile, Kid leapt. Uh, did you get the food? Oh, you got the food, you have key. Meanwhile, Kid leapt at the two in front, holding her knife in both hands. I drew my knife and rushed to Kid's side. Crash! The spiked ball of Goblin's morning star smashed into the ground, crushing the stone flooring. Kid nimbly leapt into the air, evading the attack and, land and landing on the Goblin's exposed hand. She swung upward toward the Goblin's head, plunging her knife into its left eye. Then she flipped backwards and stood ready for the next attack. That was Kid's style. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. The next goblin charged in. I jumped back. Jumped back to keep my distance. For a moment, I thought about copying Kid's trick, but I didn't have the confidence to pull it off. It was better off keeping an eye on my enemy and doing things on my own way. Though I did wish I could fight like her. The goblin pulled the iron ball out of the floor and came at me, swinging it overhead. Oh, no. I deflected the goblin's driving strike, di driving strike up toward the ceiling and aimed an almighty blow at its face with my foot. My momentum unbroken, I turned full circle in the air and landed perfectly back on my feet immediately moving in to thrust my dagger deep into its chest. Shook. The blade sank, sank in up to the hilt. What the hell? Sensing danger, I moved, jumped back. The goblin's hand grabbed uselessly at the air where I'd been standing. Had I been a moment later, it would have caught me. I was dealing with a monstrously persistent foe. But having spent the last of its strength, the goblin lost its balance and collapsed to the floor where it succumbed to its wounds. Wow, it. A battle without being without clumsy. Yeah. yeah. I realized then that everything was quiet and the fighting had ended. That must have been the last goblin. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, he's still complaining about... Yeah. We continued down the dark, dank corridor until some stairs leading downward finally came into view. Let's save. We went down the stairs. Slowly we crept down the staircase, descending deeper into the shadows as we went. At the bottom we found ourselves at another intersection. The dim, narrow passageway branched left and right. We took the left path. We continued on down the corridor until it ended at a large door covered in scratches and other odd marks. Above the door was a wooden plate. It bore the legend Guard Room in elaborate calligraphy. Well, well, reckon this might be where to find the key to the door upstairs. No getting past that bloody magic barrier without it. 
Kid pressed an ear against the door and listened carefully. Doesn't sound like anyone's in there, she whispered. Kind of feel like we'll find something that'll help us in the dark uh, guard room in the other, on the other side. You think so? So turn back for now. I meant uh, go back to the other corridor I didn't visit to find something that'll help us. No, no, the... no. Okay, love. She, she's 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 insisting on the walkthrough. <laughs> Kid opened the door. The room had seemed completely silent from the outside, and so we had thought it would be empty. But there inside was a lone goblin. It was sitting in a chair with a book in its hand. A light steam drifted from the teacup on the table in front of it, and with it a delicate aroma. Oh, it's a smart goblin. The goblin peered at us curiously over its spectacles. Wait, we did have goblins in Chrono Trigger, right? Like the little Emperor Pilaf dudes. I like them more there than here. See how they use very tiny images to save up space? They could have filled the screen, but you, you still you can still like show something in this little tiny image, uh, but save a lot of space for the Super Famicom. I like how the steam is in. My god, such art. This is art, isn't it? There was something different about this one. I could tell at, as. Oh, the goblin peered at us curiously over its spectacles. There was something different about this one. I could tell as much at a glance. Heavens, how rare it is to have guests! Heavens, how well spoken for a goblin! I could only feel dread and suspicion at the sight of him nonetheless. Sorry, Mwite, but we ain't, we're not your guests. Cough up the key to the dungeon if you want to live. Kid slammed her knife into the table to illustrate her point. But the goblin didn't so much as flinch. Ah, you must be Kid. What a pleasure it is. I have always wanted to meet you. Why, you're even more ravishing than the rumors would. Before the goblin could finish, Kid's knife flew through the air. With a f quick flick of his wrist, the goblin caught the blade with the back of his book, a mere inch from his face. I see that your approach is as radical as the name of your merry band would suggest, the goblin said, pulling the knife free and handing it back to Kid. Oh, radical dreamers, get it? Yeah. <laughs> she took it without a word. But her gaze had changed. She was like a cat cautiously studying its prey. And I was just getting to the good part too. Ah well, I suppose I shall have to give up on ever finishing it now. The goblin casually flung the book over his shoulder and into a nearby bin. Allow me to introduce myself if I may. I am Grimzold, Grismold, and I am the guard on watch. No need to stand, please do take a seat. You're welcome to tea, of course. The goblin beckoned us to sit down. Did he mean to poison us? If I may, Maggle calmly took a seat, ignoring the obvious suspicion in the air. I sat down next to Maggle. I decided to trust Megal's instinct, instincts, uh, instincts, and took a seat next to him. He was some kind of a. He had some kind of a plan. He had some kind of plan in mind. I was sure of it. Kid didn't look like she'd be pulling up a chair anytime soon. She was standing with her arms crossed, eyeing the goblin suspiciously. The goblin poured three cups of tea. Here you are. With a, without the slightest hint of hesitation, Megal took his teacup and lifted it to his lips. He sipped, then placed the cup back on its saucer. Heal me up. Heal my oh, heal my ailing tea. Not a blend I'd expect to find here. That's pretty cool. I was gonna read Himalayan tea, yeah. like <laughs> heal my alien tea. <laughs> I 
What a pleasure it is to encounter a fellow connoisseur. Yes, it's a rare blend, and one mainly enjoyed by the noble classes. I couldn't believe the conversation I was hearing, but I also couldn't help wondering what this rare tea might taste like. Oh, that's what's gonna heal me, probably. My eyes rested on the cup that had been poured for me. I couldn't shake the fear that it might be poisoned, but I also couldn't ignore how delicious it smelled. Before I knew it, the cup was in my hands. This is great, I blurted out. I'd never had such a delicious brew in my entire life. My aches and pains faded away. There we go, I was healed. I glanced over at Kid who was blowing maniacally at the liquid in her club. cup. I'd forgotten that she was paranoid about burning her mouth on things. Because she almost died in the fire. Now that we're... No. Now that we're comfortable, what is... <clears throat> ah! I want to make a... Ah! Voice. Now that we're comfortable, let's get down to brass tacks, as they say. I do indeed have... I... No, I do indeed have the key to the dungeon, as you surmised. But you will also be aware that I cannot simply give it away. I glanced over to Kid again. Typical. She wasn't listening to a word Gr Grismold was saying. She was still huffing and puffing at her tea. It seemed it would be up to me to respond. Here's our offer. Give us the key and you get to live. I guess that means you want something in return. You'd like to know what I want. I want your... Oh. Oh, man, I didn't read that. Now I want to know. Um, yeah, uh, you, you, I want your head. That's what you said. And what, was, what were my responses? Uh, I pulled my knife out. And the other one? That's, that was the only one. Oh, so you just wait. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was... yeah. yeah. Or rather, I'm sure that's what my employer would have me say. But no, I have no such barbarous aspirations. Furthermore, I doubt that'd be a match for you. Grismal chuckled as he said this. What I live for is the joy of conversation, which I fear my compatriots are ill-equipped to supply. Perhaps you might have one or two ripping yarns to share. Grinning, he added. Grinning, he added. I'm sure notorious thieves such as yourselves must have more than a few thrilling tales up your sleeves. So he wanted to hear a story. That seemed a more than fair price to pay for the key. I closed my eyes and thought, Aha! Uh -huh, I know just the story. How did it begin? One night a young girl was walking alone in the forest. And then she was searching for a golden sunflower. The first one. Or this one. What do you think? Yeah, but I know. Okay. Then I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> Since you know. Yeah, well, which one would you pick? Why? What would happen if I pick this one? Let's try. Because I would choose this. Then. She walked and walked, but the sunflower was nowhere to be found. The girl, poor girl went without food for three days and three nights. What the fuck? The first one. The fragments I remembered seemed about right. There was only one way the story could end. I took a breath and began my tale. One night, a young girl was walking alone in the forest. She was searching for a golden sunflower, the only way to cure her sick mother's illness. She walked and walked, but her, the, the sunflower was nowhere to be found. And then, in her moment of darkness, darkest despair, she saw a brilliant light. It was none other than the golden sunflower she sought. The young girl gratefully pocketed the sunflower seeds. These, these will surely save my mother, she thought. She rushed home to give them to her, and her dear mother was hale and hearty once more within days, and they lived happily ever after. That was, that was beautiful, murmured Kid, wiping a tear from her eye. Grismel frowned. Not quite what I was expecting, and not the most riveting of tales, but I suppose it will do. The key, as promised. I took it from Grismel's hand. Something didn't seem right, though. Was he really going to give up so give it up so easily? <clears throat> and was it really all right to trust such a strange goblin? <laughs> Thanks, sis. 
Oh, wait, I have this. I forgot. It used to be a carbonated juice. Um, Fanta Tropic Exotic, something, some new green Fanta. I wanted to pick up to try. <clears throat> but I, I had it at the table here since we came back from the city today. It's not even carbonated anymore. I just made uncarbonated Fanta. No, it's pretty tasty, actually. I don't like the carbonated part, really. I like the tasty part. <laughs> Grismel seemed to notice my suspicion. He leaned back into his chair and looked, looking at the ceiling. When I was a young Tyro, a braver, stupider goblin, I once served General Viper, who was the lord of this manor until his betrayal by Lord Lynx. <clears throat> yeah. Despite my boorishness, Lady Riddle always saw something in me worthy of praise. Wait, Riddle? What's Lynx's adopted daughter got to do with anything? Uh, so she was... So she was Viper's daughter in here. Yep, okay. Oh, you didn't know? Riddle's real father was none other than General Viper himself. What? Lord Link spared Lady Riddle's life as so as not to snuff out that of the frozen flame. It's an uncanny stone, you see. Has a life of its own and some kind of spiritual bond with Lady Riddle. If only there were some way I could free Milady from this manner. Alas, I alone am powerless to do any such thing. Okay, so this part is the same as in Chrono Cross. Sons the Goblin. The Goblin was not there. <laughs> Of course, I would have no qualms if, say, you were to topple the usurper. I assume you intend to slay the old beast. I mean, it was a strange inquiry to make so ca oh, it was a strange inquiry to make so ca casually. Well, if it comes to it, I was more than a little taken aback by the directness of Grismel's question. I never expected to find one of Lynx's own guards. Asking me for something like that. Asking me something like that. Suddenly I was shoved aside. So three dots would have been better for her opinion. Not if it comes to it. We're gonna kill him tonight. And kill him good. It was Kid of course. And... In exchange, I'll have come. I'll have some more of the of that tea to take with us. Kid held out her hand before Grismold could offer an answer. I suppose I have a bag I can share. Grismold shuffled awkwardly in his seat as he retrieved it. As ever, I was impressed at how Kid's uncompromising attitude and willingness to speak her mind seemed to always get her what she wanted. Bonza. Sit tight and leave the rest to us, mate. Stowing the bag in her pocket, Kit took the job. You can trust me. I'm a girl of me word. That might have been the biggest lie she'd ever told. Right, let's get moving. She made for the door with a spring in her step. We left the room and Grismald behind. Cool. We left the room and took a left turn down the corridor. Followed it for a while before coming to an intersection. The way to the right ended at the staircase going up. The corridor also continued directly ahead, but the way was completely shrouded in the darkness. I'm gonna see what's up ahead. Did I just save? I'm gonna save now. Actually, there we go. 403. We pressed on. We followed the corridor for a while before coming across a small door. Get a whiff of that! Something smells good! Whispered Kid, sniffing at the air. He went inside. Is that a kitchen? We opened the door. Blimey! This is a small kitchen! Must be for the servants, commented Magil. I scanned our surroundings. A ba basin for washing dishes, cooking utensils, some food made ready for tomorrow, and a mousetrap. It looked like 
any other commoner's kitchen. Kid walked over to a large pot filled with food and peered inside. Looks like tomorrow's lunch. Wanna try some, Serge? I was feeling hungry, so yeah, sure, why wouldn't I try it? Timidly, I peered into the pot. It looked like stew and it didn't smell bad at all. Almost inviting. I scooped some up uh, I scooped some up with a ladle and brought it to my mouth. Yep. It was delicious. It was revolting. <laughs> Fucking delicious. Why would I say it was revolting? I can choose what kind of food it was based on my taste, I guess. <clears throat> if you're an ass or not, if you're a complainer or not. Mmm, this stuff's delicious. You should grab a bowl, kid, I urged between bites. He was looking at me again, staring at me intently, in fact, like she was searching for something. Ha <laughs> ha, I knew it. <laughs> well, you ain't going green or nothing. I guess it's safe. All right, let's have a try. She licked her lips with anticipation and swiped my spoon right out of my hand. Fancy a taste, Mag? No. Kid grabbed the bowl, bowl from uh, nearby and began spooning out more. <laughs> spooning. Mmm. Yum. I did the same. We ate our fill, the stew was still warm, and it felt as though the magic of fresh home cooking was easing my wounds somewhat. We should have come here when I get hurt again. <laughs> Suddenly... Hmm? Yeah, but you know I want to maximize things in RPG. Suddenly a little voice rang out. You there, the young man with the braid. Kid froze. Oi, who are you calling a bloke? Kid barked angrily in the direction of the, vo the voice was coming from. A mouse was looking at us with its eyes like saucers, from the inside of a mouse trap hanging from the wall in a corner of the room. Was that a ninja? Did you just... Is that a ninja? Ahuila. <laughs> I don't know. It looked like a ninja from over here. Oh, since it's a mouse. Oh, I'm sorry. You're a young lady, I see. The mouse bowed its head in apology. Please, kind young lady, you must hear me out. Hear me out? The mouse put its paws together and started plead, stared pleadingly at the kid. I left the nest to find food for my mother, but as you can see, I managed to get myself caught in a trap. If you leave me here, I will surely be eaten by goblins. Kid eyed the little creature suspiciously. Eaten by goblins? Wait, that's two. Putting two and two together, kid ran for the sink. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's dark. <laughs> I beg of you, please, free me from this trap. My mother is sick and she'll be terribly worried about what has become of me. The mouse was clearly begging for its life, but there was also an odd little glint in its eye. Meanwhile, Kid was at the sink. Okay. Oh, I'm never gonna get that taste out of my mouth. I'll be buggered if I'm ha hanging around here any longer. Kid had returned from the sink, only to stamp off toward the door. She was looking very green around the gills. <laughs> Why did you support me in eating it, love? <laughs> I just ate its cousins. Yeah, but you're I was already healed by tea. Ugh. I didn't know that was going to happen. I'm sorry. I really didn't know. Her kind young lady, I don't suppose you could free me first. You got yourself what? into this mess. You can sort it yourself. Sort it out yourself. Kid all but spat on the ground as she left the room. Oh no. The mouse's eyes welled up as it looked to me. What a bitch. Young man, please, you're my only hope. Free or leave you to so I kind of think it's gonna turn into a monster. Well let's try. Let's free it. Ah, fine. Unable to bear it staring at me anymore with those pleading eyes, I lifted down the cage and opened the door. The mouse bounded happily out from the inside. Free, of course. What if it turns out to be a monster, a devil?
Yeah, I knew it. I fucking knew it. We should have left it trapped. I played too much D&D &D to believe a mouse in a mouse trap. Honestly. <laughs> the mouse gave a wicked chuckle. You poor naive fool! Suddenly its body began to balloon massively in size. Oi, Serge! What are you doing in... Kid stopped in horror the moment she opened the door. Bugger me! A griffin! The enormous creature stared balefully down at us. Come, kitty. Well, she, that's okay. We don't have a mouse. Oh, the mouse. What? Hide. 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 Da. One of the dumb signal. <laughs> yes, just don't. <laughs> She's saying. Macho. Dramat. I love how she trills. She's a very trilly kitty. She's a. a <laughs> A ventriloquist. <laughs> I love when she trills, and she trills almost all day. Like, pri, pra. That's how she speaks. So, the enormous creature stared balefully down at us. Idiot humans! My mother is not sick, but yours will be when she sees what I've done to you. Good going, Serge. You're a bloody liability, you are. Oof, okay, maybe I made a mistake, but she didn't have to rub it in like that. The griffin gave an almighty cry and leapt right at us. Its razor-sharp talons sliced through the air, breaking down toward me. Caught off guard, I tried my best to dodge the attack, because I didn't get to I keep forgetting when you have a choice in battle, it's time. But a blow never came as the griffin suddenly lost its balance and came crashing to the ground. Oh, butter! I'm too hungry to even fight properly! What on earth? What on earth? I breathed a sigh of relief, running my hand down my chest. All right, little mouse, now it's time for the real show to begin. Kid walked up to the griffin, cr cracking her knuckles. <laughs> P -p please kind young lady this is all a misunderstanding a terrible misunderstanding panicking the creature leapt to its feet what griffins they they can't they can be if the story needs them to all right so it's about time for an ip switch don't so don't go anywhere don't don't worry we'll be back in like a few seconds after we disappear because the IP address uh, on the on the modem is going to change. And it's something that happens every four hours. So, let's see how many seconds left. For some reason, the uh, upload is very, very low. Let me check something. If the internet's good at all. It's kind of like it. It's kind of like it went bad. Whoop. Log in. Yeah, look at that. It's only 1100. Nope. All good. And a few more seconds. It's going to happen. There we go. It happened. So now we just needed to try to reconnect. There we go, reconnecting. And All right, we're back. We're back. The bitrate is high again. Pretty good, like it's like five times higher than it was. Probably something with slobs. But what I'm what I'm happy about is it's working. Okay. So yeah, griffins can be whatever the story needs them to be. They can be bad. Why not? Look at look at it's look at it blinking. Yeah. Scary fucking shit. You can't kill me. I have useful information. If you let me go, I promise I'll tell you everything I know. Everything. Yeah, I know how much a promise from the likes of you is worth. K 
Kid took another step toward the griffin, not skipping a beat. Rock, please! Kid kept on coming. Okay. <laughs> the griffin kept on shrinking away. Oh, it's turning into a mouse. Enough, Maggle called for Kid to stop. Let's hear it. Oh, oh, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> he went into blood omen mode. Thank you, kind sir. The griffin was beside itself with relief. Hmm. Spoil my fun, why don't ya? Crumbled, grumbled kid, putting, pouting as she turned away. Listen well, O oh merciful savior. Right thrice, left twice, right twice. Should you find yourself trapped in one of Lynx's swirling snares, remember my words. So, three times right, two times left, two times right. So, right three, left two, right two. Right, left, right. Three, two, two. Right, left, right. Three, two, two. Three, two, two. Three, two, two. Okay. With that, the griffin returned to its mouse-like form and disappeared into a small hole in the wall. Trapped in Lix's snares? Ha! As if I'd be thick enough to walk into one of his traps. And then he walked. Let's get out of here. We wasted enough time already. Kid, kid turned on her heel and made for the door. We left the kitchen. As we made our way down the silence of the corridor, something cold landed on me from above. I put my hand up to, to my hair and felt a queeze-inducing sliminess. Ah, slugs! I lifted my head towards where it had come from, and a mass of the disgusting creatures hit me full in the face. Blech! As fast as I could brush them off, more of them landed on me and around me. It was literally raining slugs. <laughs> it's raining slugs! <laughs> Before I knew it, they'd begun to pile up wetly around my feet. They crawled all over me and I flailed and flapped as I tried to shake them loose. Quickly, back the way we came! But as we turned, we saw that the entire corridor was a writhing mass of the creatures. It's like the floor is made of them. A shiver of revulsion ran down my spine. I ain't trampling over that little carpet of gro gross. Kid shook her head violently, clearly far from amused. But the more we stood there wondering what to do, the more they kept pil piling up. Pick our way through them? What does that mean? Charge. Charge is like to run through them? Okay, but what is to pick our way? Like carefully, yeah. yeah. You're just gonna charge through them. Oh look, we're running! Look, look, look! I threw caution to the wind and myself down the teeming corridor. That's pretty cool. Like that, is it? Well, I ain't staying here on me own. Kid was clearly at a loss as to what else to do as she soon barreled after me. Slugs rayed down our ears as we ran. And oh, how we ran. We hammered along as, our, as if our lives depended on it. And as we went, the oozing juices of the slugs we trampled sprayed and splattered all over us. Our feet were soon soaked with the stuff. Whoa! Okay, it's like, like, like skipping them, says Lyubka. Possible, yeah, like carefully between them. My foot slipped and Kid smashed into me from behind. The two of us went flying and landed on the floor in a heap. Damn your clumsy arse, Sarge! She grimaced at me through a mask of slug ooze. I tried to stand, but they just but they I tried to stand, but they just kept on falling. The slug storm had developed into a delu deluge deluge. We were on the verge of giving up. It was almost more than either of us could take. They were up to our knees now and we were wading through them, desperately trying to make some headway. We didn't dare talk for fear of them falling on into our mouths. As if we didn't have enough problems already, a single solid mass of slug matter suddenly reared up ahead of us. Ah, wait, it's people-shaped! And sure enough, a humanoid form had emerged, clutching what looked like an enormous scythe. 
Pardon me? Look at it. A sight which suddenly came... Hurtling. Hurtling? I could hurt. I thought it's hurling. Hurtling toward... Oh, Ah, oh, damn it, I didn't want to take damage. Fuck! Fighting sand stands and red bat demons, I was reading. This just puts me off when I have to. Oh, stuck. Monster had swung the blade down with enormous force, but there was no time to be scared or even think. I threw up my knife to protect myself. I was alright. It had only grazed my clothes, but I still had to be on my guard. A demon! A bloody demon, spat kid. So, all that creepy stuff was an illusion? The slugs disappeared like smoke. But the demon was still there, and ready it readied its sight again and began inching towards us. I made a dash to one side of it, lifting my dagger as I went. It tore through the creature's paper-thin skin. But it was only a flesh wound. Bloody things laughing at us! And it was, too, chuckling maniac maniacal maniacally 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 Cuts kind of lost between the accents now. Maniacally in a way that made me deeply uneasy. I raised my knife again and prepared myself for the worst. My eyes met the demons, and it was then that I saw it. There was a twinkle behind them. I couldn't tear my gaze away. Its chuckle grew to a belly laugh and it peered into the very depths of my soul. And then, just like that, it had muttered a few words and melted into the shadows. Where seconds before it had tow towered over us, now not a trace of it remained. Maniacally. <laughs> what was all that about? What was all that about? Why would it just, just disappear in mid-fight? Guess it... Guess it had someplace else to be. Kid gave a shrug, doing her best to at least feign indifference. Yeah. Are you explaining what it means? I know what it means, I just... Doing all these accents and voices, I keep forgetting how to talk. <laughs> Kid gave a shrug. Oh yeah, I read that. But I couldn't shake the sense of the of unease that had filled me, and peered uneasily into the dark at the darkness into which the vile creature had disappeared. <laughs> this is one of the random encounters, mm -hmm. and you're actually close to the end. Oh, really? Not really, really close, but close. To like uh, three hours left, or no, like an hour. Okay. Wait a second, what's that? There was a leather bag on, on the ground, containing a sparkling gem. Now we're talking, Kid's face lit up with joy. Oh, we got loot. Nice find, Serge, what a beaut. Kid snatched, snatched it away, leaving me to settle for the compliment. <laughs> Again, it depends on the accent, really. Maniac. But you don't say man maniacally, you say maniacally. Phew! I had taken a few knocks, but it was all right. A scrape or two wouldn't stop me. Maybe okay, okay. Oh, oh, that's basically telling you the status of the battle. This text at the end. Yeah. Leaving the room behind us, we took a right down turn, a uh, right turn down the corridor. We followed it for a while before coming to an intersection. The way to the left ended up ended at the staircase going up. That's where we're gonna go. Stairs going up. The passage soon ended at the foot of some stairs. The kid taking the lead, we started to climb the narrow staircase. When we reached the top, we found ourselves at the end of a long, straight corridor. We continued on. We followed the corridor, eventually reaching a fork in the path. The path to the left would take us back to the atrium with the fountain. Going straight, straight on would take us to the old sturdy door. Let's save here, sturdy door. Boop. Continue straight on towards the toward the cell. 
We continued down the corridor, eventually reaching an old, rather sturdy looking door. Right, the key we got from that creepy old goblin should do the trick. Kid slipped the key into the lock. The heavy door groaned slightly as it slowly swung open. Clammy air rose up around our feet, as if crawling blindly through the darkness. This didn't seem like the kind of place anyone in their right mind would visit voluntarily. We pushed the heavy iron door the rest of the way open and stepped into the darkness. There was a row of cells all locked behind the iron bars. One, two... Oh, Gulliver, Melgid, Zoranda, please forgi forgive me, please, please forgive me. We heard a voice from the third cell, whimpering and crying pathetically. I strained my eyes to look inside. Faintly, in the darkness, I could see something that looked like a man sitting on the floor. So this was the source of the voice. Oi, you all right, mate? Kit called out to the figure. Oh, it's an old man. Forgive me, it's all my fault. It's, it's my fault. The dragon, the dragoons never deserved this. Oh, wait, is that... General, Lady Riddle, oh, forgive me, I beg of you. The old man didn't seem to respond to us at all. He only sat facing the wall, begging forgiveness for who knew what. Hello, can you hear me? Asked Kid, trying again. There'll be no getting through to him. His real self will have long since retreated inside the shell he has created said Magil, cutting her off. Shell, what do you mean? I asked. He has built a shell around the core of his psyche in order to shield himself from the truth. He is running from something, something terrible. He has seen something or been through something, or has done something. And so he has created his own world on the inside as a final refuge. The outside world lost to him forevermore. That's fucking scary and creepy. <laughs> um, I looked at Magal in surprise. I had detected a hint of unspoken sadness in his words. And for some reason, he was looking at Kid, watching over her as she stared at the man in the cell. Seeming to notice my gaze, Magal turned back to face me, assuming his usual emotionless expression once more. We live in a world of sorrow and foolishness. It's only inevitable that some would try to escape it. But despite, but despite, despite his hard words, his eyes retained a certain softness, his steely gaze giving way to a gentle light. Do you understand? Can you be a bit more specifically? I think so. I think so. I gave a slightly evasive answer. You seem confused. I don't blame you. You'll come to understand eventually. Maga looked at me and kid. What was all that about? I wondered. We're not gonna get much out of him. He's miles away. Let's just leave him be and try someplace else. Kid made for the door of the dungeon. Wait, called Magal. We must find some way to get this man to speak. What for? I mean, he's speaking already, just none of it makes sense. What are you after? Some things he said piqued my curiosity. He mentioned the Dragoons, and Riddle too. So, you said the Dragoons are ancient history, snapped Kid. Besides, how can we trust anything he says? He's clearly gone off his rocker. She had a point. The old man had long since cut his ties to the real world. What did Magal expect him to say? Without missing a beat, Magal replied. 
We simply have to bring him back to reality. How are we going to do that? You want me to do a little dance for him or something? See if he gets his motor going? Please don't. No, 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 please don't do that. The words were out of my mouth before I could stop them. What are you saying? Her eyes narrowed threateningly. You don't think anyone would uh, anyone would want to see me dance, is that it? What? No, I... Completely the opposite. And actually, uh, ignore me. <laughs> nah, this this should be good. Enlighten me. Why, why don't you? He's right. It won't work. Just like that kid's fist was flying toward Magal's face instead of mine. He dodged the blow with ease and carried on as if nothing had happened. We must break through the shell he has created and drag him back to the real world. And in order to do that, we'll need some, some kind of key. Something that will reach him even through the barrier he has erected. Yeah, and where are we gonna find this key? Asked Kid us suspiciously. I don't know, came Maggle's simple reply. But there is someone in this manner who can tell us. You don't mean... You're not talking about Riddle, are you? I am, Maggle replied with a nod. Alright, fine. Do you know what the heck you expect her to tell us, tell us though? Kid turned on her heel and made for the door. We left the gibbering old man in the dungeon alone with his sorrow. I followed Kid and Maggle back out into the corridor. After making our way down the dark corridor, we came to a branch in the path. The path to the right would take us back to the atrium with the fountain, which is where we want to go. The corridor was dark and clammy, we pressed on and soon in the entrance to the atrium came into view. Ah. Oh. Mm. We arrived back at the atrium. Hey, that's the demon we fought, isn't it? Yeah. I think. Yeah, An exit leading to Lynx's and Riddle's rooms gaped ominously from across the cavernous space. Continued on. Leaving the atrium behind us, we immediately found ourselves at a fork in the path. To the right was a passage to some stairs leading upward. A dark passageway continued on directly ahead of where we stood. Uh, ahead? Now we're gonna come across Riddle's room. Continued down the path, came across an ornate door. Yeah! Went inside. We found ourselves in a tidy, welcoming room. The knickknacks and curios dotted around the place seemed to be well loved. The stately desk and the cozy looking bed nearby, meanwhile, suggested the room's occupant was no stranger to luxury. Though the room was richly furnished, somehow it still felt awfully lonely. Is someone there? came the voice of a young woman. We shrank into the shadows. The woman appeared from deeper within the room. She was lightly made up and had a gentle, unthreatening air about her. It was Lynx's daughter. Strange, I'm sure I heard someone. It was a, I was at a loss as to what to do for a moment. But before I had time to do much more than hold my breath, Kid had already darted over and thrust her knife out, stopping the blade only at hair's breadth from the woman's neck. See, that's Kid to the right, yeah. and that's Magus actually yeah. to the left. Where's the frozen flame? Answer me! Her voice came out in a harsh growl. I rushed in to hold Kid back before she hurt the poor woman. Kid, do we really have to do the do? Do it this way. Shut your trap, Serge. Riddle couldn't help but giggle as she watched us bickering. What are you laughing at? Kid shot Riddle a harsh look. It's just you don't seem like thieves at all. 
You little, you want me to cut you, girl? Uh. I'll stab you. Ah. <laughs> I'd be surprised if that knife could cut anything. For a moment, I felt faint, imagining Riddle on the floor covered in blood. But then, clang! Kid had thrown her knife to the floor and I saw there was only a letter opener. Cat, didn't think you noticed. Whatever, I'm not here to mess around killing the likes of you anyway. I have no desire for bloodshed either, said Riddle in a voice that was almost a whisper. I am not your enemy. In fact, I want to help you. There wasn't a hint of hesitation or deception in her voice. Let me guess, you're trapped in the manor too. Riddle only lowered her eyes sadly in response to Kid's question. The frozen flame should never have been allowed to fall into Lynx's hands. Riddle spoke quietly, but deep, deep emotion clearly underpinned her words. The flame was once the property of an ancient kingdom to the north, who kept it for generations. Guardia? Wait, that's the only thing that's north of... Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, they're not in poor. I'm thinking... Maybe it's maybe it's the kingdom where the castle is where we find uh, uh, Cyrus's ghost. Remember, on the eastern continent, it was said to have the uncanny power to guide people and change history itself. After the kingdom fell, the flame changed hands countless times until eventually it came into my father's possessions. Kind of reminds me of uh, Legacy of Kings the power to change history itself. This is interesting. That was before I was born. Sometime later, Lynx became aware of the flame's true value and approached my father under false, false pretenses of friendship. Not a soul suspected what his true intentions were. And then, then on that horrible day, he destroyed everything. He killed everything. Riddle shook her head, then buried her face in her hands. Pardon me. I don't care about the frozen flame. I don't care about that stupid accursed stone. It means nothing to me. I just want to take it away from Lynx and smash it to pieces right in front of him. And only we can make that happen. Riddle looked up with surprise as Maggle spoke. No one else in the world can seize that jewel from Lynx. Riddle stared speechlessly. And then, in a low voice, she whispered, What can I do to help you? There's a survivor of the Acacia Dragoons in the dungeon who we want to help. And we are to help him. We need your help, said Magal, taking a step forward. What? That man? That man is a traitor. It's because of him that father, that Zoranda... Please, it's the only way. Riddle turned her back to us and hung her head low. The chamber of death. That might be something to bring him back to his senses there. There might be something to bring him back to his senses there. After all, it was there that he chose to abandon his pride, his life. I assume the chamber of death must be the cell with the trapped ceiling. Uh -huh. I assume the chamber of death must be the cell with the trapped ceiling. Riddle nodded. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Started kid. That thing damn near killed us last time. You will need to take the Iron Lancer with you. It is a sacred sword, said to have been forged by an ancient sage and a sister blade to the crimson cursed Massimune. <gasps> Go like that. Oh. <laughs> Wait, which uh, guru was there? Melchior. So it's probably made by Melchior. <laughs> that was adorable. The timeless blessings of the Ein Lancer will surely keep you safe from the chamber of death's wickedness. <gasps> That's why we found the writings on the floor. He yes. he made them. Yes. 
It used to be such a sight to see it in the hands of Zoranda. It danced like the wind, shone like the stars, and struck like lightning. Lost again in memories of fonder times, Riddle once more bowed her head. Forgive me, I have a little more to tell you. You've told us more than enough. We'll take our leave now, said Megal, turning and making for the door. I wish I had the strength to change things like you do, whispered Riddle, biting her lip. Kid hesitated for a moment, seemingly deep in thought. It ain't about strength, it's about having a purpose, something to fight for. Poipus. I will be praying for you, Kid shot Riddle a look over her shoulder. Great, maybe you can cross your fingers too. <laughs> we left the room. So we know Kid is an atheist. <laughs> I just fucked it up your ass. <laughs> the passage outside the room continued to our left and right. Going right would take us to Lynx's room, meanwhile, going left would take us to the atrium and another branch. Left. What do you think? Am I close to the end now? I I just feel like Huh. You're at the last third, but you are still at the beginning of the last third, so it's like four to go. Uh -huh. yeah, so Continue really down the go. corridor. Okay, yeah, let's go. We got the sword from her, right? No, we need to take the sword. Which was where? Uh I, I don't know, was it in the machine? Or... She did say, or maybe in the treasury? Clock tower storage room, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so stairs. It, it is related to Glenn's side quest. And over on Chrono Cross. That's what it said. Really? Glenn uh, has a side quest in Chrono Cross? On yeah. The Chrono Cross, yeah. The passage to the stairway was short. With kid, kid leading the way, we started to climb the narrow staircase. At the top, we found another intersection. Taking the corridor to the right would lead us to a dead end with a large door, while the way to the left led to the terrace. The narrow side passage in front of us was open. <laughs> Yeah, that's where I'm going. Yeah, I remember where it was. I actually remember without the map. I'm good at this. I'm good at this. Am I? Think we should finish it today? So keep following the corridor. That's the door, right? Yeah. There it is, our ticket to not get in turn into mincemeat. The ancient sword was right where Kid had left it after pulling it out from the pile of junk. She ran over to where it lay. Yeah, she did pull the sword out. Looking down at the sword, Magal muttered. Two ancient blades, the sacred Einlancer, Einlancer, and the cursed Masson Mune. What you're on about, Mag? You know something about this Master Muni? Magal said nothing. Well, it seems it means something to you. It does. Uh-huh. Something to do with old friends I don't know about? Not exactly. An enemy, then? Not exactly. Ah, uh, yeah, being weird, Mag. Well, whatever. Oi, numbnuts, grab this thing for me, will ya? I was still standing by the doorway when Kid called over to me. Who, me? Yeah, you, or were you gonna make me lug the bloody thing around the place? I'm just a scrawny little girl, ain't I? Called yourself a gentleman? That one? 
jaw drop. Let's do a jaw drop. I knew there wasn't anything I could say to her. Finally, I walked over to Kid and picked up the sword like I was told. Whoa! I nearly fell over. That thing was heavy. Okay. That's okay, sis. Yeah, I'm still thinking whether I should end it here. And... You say there's very little left, huh? I mean, I cannot be uh -huh. What's your sentence, John? Can save here. Yo, John boy. If he's still alive, he might be asleep. What happened? I got the sword. What do you mean? There was given the chance to, to slam the sword into the floor. I plunged the sword into the ground. You don't get an item, that's what it said. Well, it's not get, get, giving me that, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's end it here. I'm, I'm tired as well. I got up at like 6.30 this morning, so it's good for me. And... Uh, it's gonna be a short stream. I'm thinking maybe even tomorrow before going to driving school, but we'll see. Depends, because I really want to start Chrono Cross yeah. ASAP, like really soon. I'm not kidding. I can't wait to play that game again. All right, folks, that's all for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you, sis, John, Gammy over there at work, Sash for the support, <laughs> always. Uh, so next stream is scheduled for Friday, should honor that. Uh, like I said, maybe I do a little short stream tomorrow to finish this, but I, I'm not sure, it depends on uh, how early I finish work, because I'm leaving. It will be earlier than I usually stream, basically. But yeah. Okay, bye-bye. I'm glad you like it, sis. I'm glad you like it. I'm thinking around 1 or 2 p.m. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I said, it all depends on work and how early I get up again. Probably again around 6.30 a.m. That's my usual waking time, but we'll see. We'll see. At any rate, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and all that. Oh, uh, this, is, this is stuck. Okay, it's not stuck. Uh, yeah, let's raid someone actually. Let's see if anyone's streaming. Phew. Twitchy. Twitchy. Go for a nice raid. Let's raid Slim. It's been a while. It's doing Apex Legends. I think he just started, so that's perfect. Yeah. Star Raid. Whoosh! Okay, okay, then we'll make something up. Friday, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. At any rate, that's all for me. Till next time. Bye!